Hello and welcome everyone. I am Tech Chariot and I am here with a new scripter BP and he has created Pasture. And I thought it was pretty cool. I actually this started out as him having a question about these uh, these mud piles here. And then I told him I could help him and then it turns out that I couldn't. I'd have to I'd have to do some more scripting work to be able to help him. He said, "Ah, don't worry about it. It's not that big enough of a deal." So, I'm going to help him in a different way though. We're going to help him like a fun way, a way that doesn't involve all kinds of gnashing of teeth and snarling and pacing and getting up and down and wondering why the program isn't doing what you want it to do. A fun, you know, like a way where you're actually playing Age of Empires instead of just trying to program something to get some small feature. So, we're got we got a couple of guys, something very special. We got a couple of guys who are going to play pasture in a 1v1 setting to give BP a little bit of a better idea of how it plays out competitively. Uh, we got Tipe versus the Plush Werewolf. Both of these guys are around mid-1300s, I would say. So they're probably in the top 10% of the world-ish. And uh, BP is here with me in voice. He's going to co-cast it with me, and we're excited to see what kinds of strategies unfold. How are you doing, BP? I'm doing very well. That's good. Ready to see how it goes. So we've talked about this map previously. For those that are just joining us today, um, tell me a little bit about what inspired this map, what, what you're going for in this map, what you want to do, and I'll pan the camera as best I can to keep up with your description. All right. So yeah, this style map, I wanted to mimic a cow pasture, which I'm f very familiar with where I've grown up in the area, seeing them passing by on the road a lot. So I knew I needed to have relatively open field, but I didn't want it to be um, like some maps like Haboob, where it's just completely open except for the two little center tree lines you have and then otherwise the tree border. But I, I knew we needed to have more wood than just these reeds I have. Um, the reeds are meant to add a little bit of natural wall that people can use, but they don't have much wood and they can be chopped through quickly. So, uh, or a simple onager shot would probably flatten a whole one. So I got the outer border of trees for people to go back to, similar to Haboob. Um, there's plenty of cows to be had. I have them that they will always generate like that. It won't be random with sheep or goats or pigs. It'll always be cows because that's what it's meant to be. But then as you can see here, there are extra cows on each cow patty, which is what these are. These are giant middle mounds of cow manure that have been placed on the pasture. And you can see they've been eating lots of good stuff. They got the extra <laughs> golden stone <laughs> speckled about like corn. Uh yeah, I but wanna... you get you can everybody so like I, I imagine the game starting out. Um, there are neutral cows like nor, like any other standard game normal, but then I imagine players might run straight to these mounds, whichever one they choose. Maybe they'll end up fighting scouts, or one goes to the other, and they can get an extra four cows just from that. They can use the scout or send back to their base. Um, otherwise. Resources are pretty standard around the player bases, except for gold and stone. I believe I have it set to three tiles, uh, two groups of three tiles each. So similar to Golden Pit, you won't last very long. I, one of the gold tiles is four, it looks like. Yeah. You won't last very long with those resources at your base. You're going to have to get to the neutral manure piles if you want to get more gold and stone. Um, I have... Relics spawning. This is the most recent change. I th Relics should be spawning fairly um, consistently. One on each mound and then one at the center pond. Uh, and then one next to each player base. Okay. Um, distances shouldn't vary too much. But I have, I think, a couple generations, a random mound may be missing a relic. But I think I've fixed that for the most part. Um... What else? Middle pond, of course. Uh, so I think when we were, you were trying to help me, you discussed it just as a passing comment saying, do you think players would actually go for it? And I didn't, I was like, well, I don't have that many fish. I think it was five or six shore fish. It was a pretty small pond. I don't think it'd be worth it, but I wanted the aesthetic there because you, you can see a lot of cow pastures. They'll have a little watering pond uh, or a little stream for the cows to go to. So I was like, that can be an, another important part that can uh, play a role in sieves that have um, 
some wider economy. Maybe they want to try to control that, even though it is closer to other player bases. So I added what should be, let's see, 11. Yeah, it should end up being around 10 to 11 fish each generation. So that could be well worth it for players to go for Mm -hmm. at some point. They can even place a couple docks if they have control of the area. But there will also always be a relic on that beach. Uh, another important factor for players to consider. Um, any other standard resources? Deer, it'll be random three or four like uh, most normal maps, and that'll spawn near the player base. And then the wild horses play no factor. I don't have um, any resources on them. They're just an aesthetic. They're just decoration. Yeah, just decoration Great. for the, the farm pasture. Boars are standard as well. Uh, I think that's about it. So it looks like uh, Tipe is here. Hey, Tipe, how's it going? Tipe is one of the players. Um, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to test this out so that uh, BP and I can, uh, can, can talk about the strategies that you come up with for this unique map? Let me know if you guys are ready. Thanks for the description, BP. It looks like there's a lot of good stuff going on here. So do you guys actually... Um, this is... But well, this is inspired by some place down south, right? Southern United States area. It could look yes. like uh, like an area. I think you said maybe you were from the Carolinas or Virginia or something like that. Um, yes, South Carolina. South Carolina. You know, this look, this reminds me a lot of like areas driving down the 81 corridor all the way from Winchester, Virginia to uh, to Roanoke. Um, and you just you drive by pastures that look just like this. Cows everywhere. Cows are the embodiment of the American spirit. They're big, <laughs> taste, tasty animals that are expensive and difficult to maintain. So it's kind of our style. Hey, Cesar is here. Welcome, Cesar. All right, they're ready. Let's go uh, hop into the lobby here. We'll, of course, get more chat about the map. If you guys have any ideas or comments, let, let BP know. Because... Um, uh, the guys running the contest don't have much to say about advice and stuff like that because you don't want to get accused of favoritism. But uh, yeah. I favor everybody, so uh, I don't. I if somebody accuses me of favoritism, it's I consider it a compliment because everybody's my favorite. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can spectate this game. So, oh, let me send you the let me send you the link, BP, as well. Before I forget to do that. Uh, all right. Looks like they're ready, and then we'll just we'll we'll just fast forward to real time. They can start whenever. I'm assuming that there's not like there's not too much that you want us to see in the first two minutes of the game, unless you've got some special unit I don't know about. But uh, no, there uh, it should be pretty standard start. I think the only difference is if players would go for the cows in the middle or. Um, Maybe try to lame, but otherwise, I don't know if there's much difference. Now, uh, do you guys have? Do you guys actually have boars down there in the South Carolina? You know where this pasture could be in the world. Are there actually boars? I know that there's been talk about boars like making their way up from the warmer areas down south. I don't think they quite live in you know where I live in New York State. Although maybe they maybe there are small groups of them. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we have boars around here. Um, I'm not sure what kind of sizes they can get up to, but I've I've seen them before. I've I've lived in a I grew up in a woody area, and they definitely pass through often. So they're a great fit for the pasture. Then probably that's drives right. the farmer crazy, but <laughs> that's why they get eaten real quick. That's right. All right, so I'm trying to find the game here. I had it in the wrong place. I had it in lobby browser. Let me just type in TPA and see what happens. Testing new maps. Here we go. Spectate with Capture Age. So are you in yet, BP? I am searching, yep. And spectate. I'll be in in a second. Perfect. So... Interesting. We got Bohemians and we got Mongols. Did you ever expect people would pick Bohemians on this map? Uh, no. I I love Bohemians, but I, a Mongols is a pretty obvious one. I I feel like Britons may end up being an obvious one. I I would 
prefer not to see the meta plays, but it's inevitable because they're meta for a reason. But Britons with the extra cows would make sense, or uh, Tatars along with mobility. All right. So my capture age takes a while to load. Capture age is a really nice application, but I don't think it's quite optimized yet. Either that or my computer is just old and tired. <laughs> yeah, right. I, don't, I don't have the pro version. But so, this one suits me just fine. So Tipe picked the Bohemians, which is interesting. And Plush Werewolf actually picked the Mongols. Which uh, is not what you would expect. You would expect Plush to pick the Bohemians, or the, yeah, the Bohemians, because he loves them. And for Tipe to pick the Mongols, because Tipe knows a good scouts build. But uh, I am not really sure what these players are planning. So let's... Yeah, maybe he's thinking free mining upgrades, go for the middle quickly, take control of it. I mean, uh, go for the cow patties pretty quick with the bohemians oh that's true now uh tipe scouting with a cow here and plush werewolf going off immediately getting the neutral cows on one of the cow patties look at that yep. tipe has he not took gone one yet. Will he has plush... not gone forward will plush get the other so are you watching off of my stream bp or are you do you have the game loaded up I have uh, the game loaded on my own uh, capture age. Perfect. Let me fast forward here to catch up to them. Real time, I'm at 8x. That doesn't necessarily mean it's playing at 8x. So I'm at, let's see, minute. I'm at 240, 250 right now. Okay. I guess you're at 250. I'm at 250. I just got to three minutes here. So. I did as well. Okay, perfect. So I think I think we're basically caught up to uh, to live play then. Yeah, and we it looks like that... they uh, Tipe went to the right mound um, oh. and found two cows, but now Plush Werewolf is taking those. Tipe yeah. has one, but Plush got three more, so he's going to have quite a lot of food. So this this map could could sort of boast that early aggression, if you will, over the different the different cow mounds here. That could give something could could give players something to fight over. Right. Neither player has attempted to dock yet. Tipe rushing down a house here. I'm wondering if the players will attempt will attempt to dock at all. Let's see. Is there do you use a hotkey to check the fog of war on Capture Age? Uh, you can click down here at Fog of War. Um, click and then right click. Okay, Alt D maybe. To toggle combined mm -hmm. fog. Anyway, there's a little button down here I'm showing on my stream that you can click on to toggle the fog of war, and to uh, change uh, between different player yep. perspectives, you hit Shift and then you right click. So we can look at what Plush Werewolf can see. So Plush is aware of the the pond. Now, he knows his opponent probably hasn't docked it yet, unless his opponent built the dock on his side, which would be kind of weird. Okay, so Tipe is adding... He's going out to boar now. Oh, is Plush going to mess with that boar lure? Yeah, look at that. That's annoying. <laughs> is Tipe going to... Well, he's messing with it, but he, he just made the boar slightly weaker is all. Yep, he was not able to get a kill on the board. Tipe is going to have to hop into that TC quick. Yo-Yo Dude is here in chat. He says, that pond with no deep fish is indeed very important. Well, it's got 11 shore fish. No, it's got 10 shore fish. So no player has gone out there yet. But uh, BP and I thought that they might go there if there were enough shore fishes. Could be worth it. Tipe just pulled his last two neutral cows, but yeah... Plush has one, two, three, four, six, seven. Plus his two neutral, uh, two extra neutrals. He still hasn't gotten yet. Oh yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't found them. They're over here loitering with some of these wild horses. Now, mm -hmm. um, did you know that you can actually upgrade 
um, a horse to a cow. So you can actually make cows that behave like wild decoration horses that can't be used for food if you want. I had... I knew that was a thing. Oh, Tipe lost the scout. Uh, I oh, hadn't thought about that, though. That that would probably add to the aesthetic, but it might confuse players, too. I'm not sure. Yep. They would have to be a different look of cow. Probably the dairy cows. Oh, what's this? Did Tipe get some... He got his cows back. He sacrificed his scout to get his cows back. <laughs> to get two of them, yeah. Um, Is that worth it? It depends. Yeah, you might... If you wanted to do that, you would have to upgrade the horses to be like the dairy cow and then mm -hmm. leave the, the meat cow to be eaten. But even that might be confusing to the players. All right. Yeah. So what I did, I have you start with the I don't know if they each have different icon names, just like I know it's the DLC cow one, two or whatever. But uh, start with the black and white. The two neutral ones for you to get are black and then the cow patty cows i have is the white and brown okay so i don't know if there is a fourth one that i could do just have it as a decoration okay so stable coming down for plush werewolf he's got three scouts in queue he has a lot of food because he has all these cows and tipe is hitting feudal age now what's the plan for tipe tipe is going to go scouts as well he is building a stable that is interesting little behind i think flush had clicked up at 18 bills mm -hmm. now in terms of idle town center time tipe is one villager worth of idle town center time and plush has about two-thirds of a villager so it's uh, 30 and 17 seconds and the scouts are already coming they're coming against tipe tipe is gonna have to be careful otherwise plush will find this villager here and there's the dead villager i think don't think it can make it back. Well, oh, is he going to get away? He is. Plush Just is not going to dive it. Plush <clears throat> prioritizing the health of his scouts mm -hmm. over picking off I don't know villager. if you saw their comment earlier. They said uh, Gurjaras would work well on this map, which is very true. Uh, being able to take those extra cows and put them in the mill. Mm -hmm. Let's see be a little more oppressive than they already are, I suppose. So, Plush is going to attack Tipe's villager. He's going to try to steal that cow, too. Try to get <laughs> Tipe to be housed here. So, Tipe, with about a minute of Town Center idle time, Plush, very similar. Now, um, no elevation, really, on the map except for the cow patties. Is that intentional? Correct. Is that a feature to be added? You wanted the map to be flat everywhere because it's because most of the pastures are flat. Um, talk me through yeah. your logic for the elevation. So yeah, it's mainly just because I think of a, a big flat pasture, a uh, flat farmland. I, obviously, you can find plenty of examples where there may be a large hill goes down to a creek or something, but I didn't want to complicate it too much, mm -hmm. um, and just have the comical aspect of the large manure mounds giving them elevation. Uh, yeah, but otherwise I did want to just maintain a flat land, keep it that way. It's some similar to Huboob, which is a standard map. I almost think that this map might be more open than Haboob in some respects. Okay, so Tipe adding a blacksmith now. Um, because you can actually, although you can wall to the edge of the map, your, your tree reeds are kind of sparse and small. And they're easy to overchop. So you basically have to have this ring of forest around the outside. Yo-Yo Dude in right. here in the chat saying, Yo-Yo Dude is an expert about the Indian sibs. He says, Gurjaras will be insane here. They can go forward mill for fish too, but it's high risk, high reward if you go forward mill. So he's thinking maybe you build a forward mill on these fish and collect the fish because it's very fast food. And then you garrison your cows in that mill. It seems like that's his logic. True. Yep, that's that's why I added the different aspects. Kept the, the hunt, added extra fish, extra cows. That way, there could be uh, different plays than just the, the meta that you usually see. So Plush, uh, looking to get in, but can't quite get in. Have a lot of scouts built up, but not really... He does. He's got eight scouts. Utilizing them. 
Deepay's built a Deepay's bunch of heading out too. now. I was about to say he he should try to go get a little bit of damage in. So Plush's walls are a bit bigger than Tipe's walls from the look of it, and he hasn't finished walling yet. So mm -hmm. here comes here comes Tipe. He's gonna find Plush's a couple gold. spears ready. He still didn't take those. Plush didn't take those extra cows back there. So Plush does have loom, and it looks like Tipe has gotten a villager kill on Plush, which hurts. Plush has an idle villager here, which he will find and probably put to work. Okay, Tipe building Plush a... also has forging. I don't think either has bloodlines yet. Yeah, so Plush has got forging, and so does Tipe, it looks like. So they both have forging. They prioritized it over the armor, which is an interesting choice. Probably because they want to kill villagers. Although the armor would help survive Town Center Arrow Fire if you just wanted to dive in here. And who's going to keep their scouts alive better? I don't know if Tipe cares as much about his scouts. So maybe he'll just kind of throw them away and then do something different with the Bohemians in Castle Yeah, he Age. has been able to do well with them when Bohem with scouts. Uh, cavalry is not really the Bohemians' forte. That's why it was sort He's of He's been bizarre. able to keep up, though. Hmm. Okay, Plush putting down a market now. And Plush Source is... Source-wise, he's probably closer to clicking up. Plush is on stone. So this is telling me Plush wants a castle. And a castle could make sense in, Mo in uh, Mongols versus Bohemians. Because what do Mongols do against Hussite wagons if Tipe ever, ever gets there? Mangadai could be very helpful. Yep. Mangadai can shred the wagons. The uh, wagons fire too slow to be able to counter them very effectively. They have to rely on their HP. Tipe is... They do have high high pierce armor, so you can take that into account. That nullifies a lot of the damage, but obviously Mangadai still have the bonus damage. Mm -hmm. And Plush is clicked up now. Tipe is really great at being a pest with scouts. If anybody who's ever played Tipe going scouts can testify... Is he going to get this walling villager? <laughs> yeah, he's in on the walling Oh, uh, she he almost got the uh, quick wall off, but not quite. And he's going to get another villager. He's going to go down for the plush werewolf. That's so annoying. Plush has the military to keep it at bay, you know, to fight it off. But it's just not in the right place at the right time. Plush playing very defensively. Maybe he needs to come forward and start threatening Tipe. Start attacking this this market maybe or the edge of this blacksmith plush is still not finished his wall he's got an open section over here by these horses near there's actually another neutral cow out there yeah still didn't get those what's his uh vision looking like plush i mean he sees that yeah, he scouted pretty much the whole map. He just hasn't looked in that corner in a while, I guess, too focused. Yep, he has not found the the cow back here. And uh, he. May, I don't know if he's assuming that this whole wood line just goes to the edge. It wouldn't be a good assumption, but I can't really... No. I can't explain why he hasn't walled that yet. Maybe he just hasn't may, gotten around The to one it. thing I can think of is there's just so many animals right there. He's just like... Just icons on his screen. He just thinks maybe it is fully closed mm. off. But no, I don't... I don't think I've seen reeds ever touching the wood line. Uh, I could be mistaken on the generations, but I think for right. the most part, they do stay away. Let me ask you something. I mean, would you like to make sure that the reeds don't touch the wood line? Is that important to you? Or do you want no, I, regulating yeah, a certain I, distance? I, I've between... thought about that. A uh, little bit of randomness, I think, is fine. Um, the, the reeds are mainly just to pretend to be like tall grass in the pasture, but uh, I did... Wanted to have a little bit, the little bit of wood resources that they do have, just to um, help with walling, like they've done, or make it a little different. But if they end up touching the trees, sometimes that's perfectly fine. That just adds to the aesthetic. All right, so you don't mind if they're close to the trees, then, because if mm -mm. if you wanted to ensure that the reeds were touch or were a certain distance away from the trees, then you could layer another terrain on top of this grass. Uh, and let's say separate it by six tiles or so, 
So you could put like beach or DLC rock or, you know, just anything that's not this grass terrain or this grass three terrain. And then tell the reeds to be on top of that. And then they would always be a certain distance away from the trees because they would avoid that. Yeah. Um, I see what you mean. Tipe has discovered that Plush is making Mangadai now. He's got scouts working on this Mangadai. Mangadai are very bad without the upgrades, but they have a very high ceiling. Mangadai can become highly damaging, powerful units. So yep. Plush has added one town center, and Tipe has actually added two. Plush trying to get in here with the scouts, and he can't quite do the damage. Still fairly close on villagers, but yeah, um, Tipe did get a little snipe on that wood, that... uh palisade wall that villager was trying to wall up when he sent those scouts in mm -hmm. looks like now he's going for relics and he does have pikemen on both manure piles guarding them the precious yep. precious resources yep i'm sure these uh these pointy boys are happy to be standing on top of these uh, oh cow yeah patties. for sure okay now uh plush is Still just riding around. Let's see what Plush's vision looks like. Does he know Tipe's dastardly deeds? Well, he's going to see that the relic is missing on this side. Did he scout the monastery? No. It doesn't look like Plush has scouted the monastery. So he doesn't necessarily know that Tipe is up to no good with regards to the relics. But he'll see a lot of pikemen camping the relics. So maybe he assumes Tipe is going for them. So Tipe is really good at booming. It's uh, a big strength of his. He loves town centers. He loves booming. And Plush... All right, Plush is still going to keep most of those scouts alive. Still hasn't scouted the far right side. He just sent those around, but... Yeah. That may come to bite him later. If still he hasn't... Open. He's still focusing on massive walls. Um... Mm -hmm. So Tipe can, if he sends, just click something to go in there, they'll walk either side, so Tipe won't even know. Okay, so Plush has a group of Mangadai here, and if he micros them properly, he can kill pikemen pretty easily. So Plush may not, you know, he might be scouting these pikemen and just be like, ah, it's fine, Mangadai kill them. He has not scouted the relics yet. I don't think he's killed any monks yet. So I don't know if he, like, realizes that Tipe is going the relics or has made monks. I don't think it matters too much. Oh, man, those deer are almost... Uh, he he can see now. that one relic is missing from the one of the mounds, but I don't think he's paid too much attention to it. So Plush adding a third town center on the outside ring of wood now. Plush does have... The, he did wall off the pond. I still think that's funny, like how massive his walls are. But mm -hmm. those two relics are right next to each other. If he just dropped the monastery, he'd get quick two gold income from the relic. Oh, yeah, that's true. Now, have you considered He's putting in. putting the relic on a small island in the middle of the pond? I thought about that, but I think that'd be too annoying. You, you're making a whole, even if, because people don't have to make a dock, they could just put a mill. Right. Um, I assume by the, the fish, but they'd have to make a dog, make a transport ship, be able to protect the whole thing just to grab one relic that's three tiles away from land. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, now, what do you think about making this pond unwallable? Like making this pond all shallows or something like that, or all the ponds a sufficient depth? That's possible. If the pond were completely shallows, then Plush wouldn't be able to wall to it. No. Oh, did I miss something? Plush has got pikemen running through his base for whatever reason. So Tipe's pikemen did going down. He get a little raid in, but uh, they've just kind of gone back and forth a little bit. Tipe's definitely gotten ahead in Vils now. He's get going for a fourth town center. Wow. that's He's confident. He's got a, an archery range coming down too. But he hasn't picked up this last relic on the cow, cow pie yet. The, the one that's outside of Plush's mostly formed walls. Plush still snaking his walls around. He wants to make sure he has a large empire area. Yep. He has large sent a kingdom. villager to this corner now. And the villager is standing there, so I can I can only assume that we're going to get walls finally here. Yep. Alright, yes, we do. With the deer. 
So Plush is a healthy mass of Mangadai. Deepay's got some Hussite wagons lumbering toward them. Yes, and it looks like he's when he saw those Mangadai there with his pikemen, he shifted shift queued his monk around, so it's walking around the reeds to try and go snag that relic. See if Plush notices that. He's probably looking elsewhere right now though. Oh yeah, I see it right here. Plush is dropping a castle on Tipe. Mm. Oh boy. I don't think so this you, is a good idea. I get in I don't, theory I don't it makes think sense. that would go. He doesn't can't tell. He doesn't know what you and I know. Like you and I know that Tipe just clicked up to the Imperial Age. Plush doesn't know that. So Plush has a good mass of Mangadai. He needs to do damage with them. Look at that. Two, three, three shots from the Mangadai to take down this Hussite. With a group like that, wagons. now the, hus the wagons don't really stand much of a chance. I don't. I can't see the range indicators from Castle Age, but I would have imagined. I guess he doesn't have fletching or anything that seems Tipe's castle could have reached that. Plush yeah, with a large... Missed. He just sold it, actually. He just sold all of his wood, because now he's, his castle is up. He wants to click up now. And he can mm -hmm. click up now. Actually, he had the castle before, so he could have clicked up sooner. Tipe is going to be Imperial Age before him, though. About a minute before him. So, the good news for Plush Werewolf is he is one of the most obnoxious sibs in the entire game. And even if Tipe does all the right things and gets the trebs, you know, and camps them at the base of his castle to take down Plush's castle... Uh, even if he does all of that, Plush could run in with these Mangadai and just snipe the trebuchets because they deal so much bonus damage to them. Uh, Tipe also yeah, and he's, two he's masked up enough. Tipe has had quite some idle time with these villagers in the middle of his base. He doesn't have an army to be able to fight this off, even if he does do the trebs like you said. So in terms of military count, Plush definitely has an advantage. He's got uh, 106 pop to Tipe's 100 pop, but Tipe has 92 villagers to Plush's 79. So Plush has 27 military to Tipe's 8. So Plush definitely has a big military advantage over Tipe. You know, the question is, can he use it? And it doesn't really look like he's getting the damage in, although he does have map control. He has the forward castle. He's got control over the cow patties. Oh, this is convenient. Look at this. Plush wants to town center this cow patty. Yummy. Oh no, he's yep. running away. Plush could totally deny this castle. He could have stopped that, yeah. Um, the castle's going up. But he's too honest of a player to watch the stream and play in the game at the same time. Yeah. If Tipe had decided to place his uh, castle in that uh, town center area, he would have canceled uh, Plush's town center. Mm -hmm. They take up the same amount of tiles, right? Yep. Both 4x4. Four so, Tipe is Imperial Age now, and he is pumping out skirms like a madman. Uh, he's got 13 skirms in queue, distributed over four ranges, it looks like. Yep. That's the best he can do, I think, as Bohemians. Um, you can all, always say hoof nice, which is what I like to call it. I know there's different pronunciations. Oh, Plush canceled his town center. Yep, he knows. This castle is going up. He's got to build the town center a little bit further away. It'll be annoying, though, because there will be a hill over it. So this is fun to see now uh, with Tipe's villagers on the mounds. So my original thought was, for the description, two ant colonies fighting in a field, a pasture field, um, with ant, with uh, maybe the cow patties dotted around everywhere. But I just like slowly transferred into what we see now. But it's still funny seeing the villagers all mill around on the cow patty. They do look like little ants just scattered everywhere. <laughs> all right. Now, is Plush trying to contest this? No, he built one trebuchet and he's got another from his castle. So I don't think he's he was repairing the castle, but he knows he can't save yeah, it. He's, he's followed back and might be going to try to take control of that mound, bringing his trebs over there. I don't understand this lumber camp. I guess it just gives these villagers something to do. Plush has 86 villagers now. Tipe has 92. So the villager difference is not that large. Tipe's got trash units, but the trash units that Tipe has happen to counter what Plush has perfectly. Um, yep. So what is Plush going to do about that? He's actually got a bunch of stables filled with light cav, which is pretty common play, I think. It's faster than siege. 
And we're going to see Light, Light Cav and, and Mangadai versus Skirmisher. Now, Tipe yeah. is getting Halberdier, so it tells me that he has some awareness. Here's the thing, though. Um, really, I, Tipe, if he made... If he made archers and skirmishers, Plush would be in big trouble. Because Mongols don't get the final armor on their light cav. That's right. So it actually really hurts against Imperial Age archers with chemistry. Um, Plush does not have that many upgrades on these Mangadai, though. So I think Tipe is just sort of like throwing these skirmishers to try to kill some Mangadai. But the light cav are killing a lot of skirmishers. And Tipe is going to be forced back. Tipe is going to be yeah, forced off his, of this castle. His trebs missed about Cal every shot <laughs> against uh, Plush's trebs, so that castle goes down. He needs, He's pushed back for sure. He needs to regroup. This is definitely still winnable for Tipe, um, but Plush has the upper hand for now. And Plush is almost out of gold at home, so he's going to have to take control of one of the mounds for sure. Tipe is out of stone, and he's on... His last three piles of gold. So Zetnus actually came up with a way of, like, evenly distributing lands across a map. I don't know if you saw some of that conversation, but, you know, if it is actually possible to uh, to generate lots of little cow patties across the map, if that's what you want. You've done a great, you know, you've done great work with the two big cow mounds. Um, but just... Maybe it's it could be important to note that it is possible to do that, to elevate them. I'm yes. assuming that's why you didn't do it at first, because if you tried doing it with terrains, you realized you couldn't elevate them, because terrains come after elevation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to see if we maybe make them a little smaller and then dot them around, try to make them avoid the players still. Um, this was more of the immediate solution, was just having two of them in... Yep. Uh, fairly large and keep them as player lands so they stay in a circle formation around the other player spawns. But I think... Yeah, I'm not sure. But this is definitely interesting seeing how it plays out now. Mm -hmm. The game is essentially gone to post imp. We're not in the low gold situation. Uh, it looks like Plush has taken control of one of these cow patties and... He's mining at the other, but he doesn't really have control over it. Tipe could go over there if he wanted to. The Tipe is a little busy on the left-hand side of the mm -hmm. map. So this is a, you know, this is a really good matchup here. They they both have similar numbers of villagers and similar amounts of military. Uh, Tipe is just going with the trash units, and these Bohemian halberdiers are nothing to sneeze at either. That's right, but he doesn't have enough. He's getting pretty mopped up right now. The Mangadai are, Mangadai just, are doing their work. Hussar taking care of the skirms. They're not elite Mangadai, though. And he is going to snipe that second treb. Kill some Hussars while he's at it. Yep. Doesn't have much gold in the bank. But he hasn't gotten Bracer yet, either. Oh, he needs... Yeah, he needs Bracer. Tipe's had these two halves sitting by the right mound pretty much all game. Obviously mm -hmm. a lot to pay attention to. But if he just had those sitting in the middle, they probably could have prevented those villagers from doing their thing. Yep. Plush has got some free mining rights on this cow, cow mound here. That's right. Almost enough. Getting enough for another castle. He might try to just put it down there since his army's up north, basically holding that area. If he secures that second mound, then Tipe will be just forced to continue fighting with Trash. Got a couple Bombard Cannons. You might try to go get those Trebs, but Mangadai can simply pop them from afar. I think the play for Tipe is Arbalister. Arbalister will shred through the Hussar, and they will also hard counter the Mangadai. Yep. But Tipe is rich. He's fully boomed. He's got lots of trash pumping out. So maybe Tipe's attitude is just, look, I know there's neutral gold here, but I'm not going to waste my time fighting over it. You know, and 
he, he mainly is full trash. Does not have much gold or much gold income. And Plush is just peacefully mining these gold mines, so... Yeah, and he decided to go with a castle back there. I guess because he was getting pushed back. Surprised he didn't want to try to secure the mound a little more, though. Ah, Tipe's noticed down on the right mound, so he's trying to get a mining camp over there. We'll know which vills he sent. I'm assuming I'll get there eventually. My capture age is slow. Oh, you're a little behind? Yeah, I'm at 48.12. Where are you? Oh, I'm at uh, 50.30 right now. Wow. So you're about two minutes ahead of me. Ah, no worries. <laughs> I mean, you are the map scripter, so uh, people should expect you to be prescient. What? Yo-Yo thinks it's over? Not enough Mangadai? Yo-Yo, Plush Werewolf has had control over these over these golds for quite some time. Tipe does Dude. have a lot of spam, though. Look at all that trash. Yes, the spam. Plush will have to pull his Mangadai back. He only has two castles now. Yeah, that's true. He's building a third back here, though. So Mongols, if there's one thing that Mongols do really well, I think it's prevent siege pushes against them. Because they can just go in and snipe the siege with their Mangadai. And trash units do not really threaten buildings. Oh, looks like... Okay, yeah, you're still behind. I'm at 51. The game just got over. Yo-Yo yo, -Yo, yo, -Yo said, Plush falling into the classic Ronald Rage mistakes with Mongols. What's that, Yo-Yo? Need a lot more castles. That's what the Mongols like. Many, many castles. Alright, Tipe is here. He has killed two villagers with these halves. Raiding Plush Werewolf's gold. Plush Werewolf attempting some quick walls. And he's got one man good eye here. He goes down to the halb. So plush cleaning that up. He's getting chemistry now. Where are these man good eye at? They do not have bracer yet. So plush needs to get bracer. And he needs to get elite man good eye. Okay, so Tipe decided to come around this way. Yo-Yo thinks that if Tipe spams enough trash, he can prevail. I do like a good trash spam. And Plush, not enough attention down here, and now Tipe is over here with his trash spam. Plush is, however, still gathering from the, the left-hand side of the map. The left side cow patty. Oh, wow, we have a massive raid over here from Plush Werewolf on Tipe. On this wood line, killing a lot of lumberjacks. That I had not seen, but it's it's possible. The, uh, the ring of wood is a little thin on the outside. So, uh, that could make it easy to sort of over-chop. That does hurt. So Tipe is at 90 villagers and Plush has 108 now. Uh, Tipe is taking from the right cow patty and Plush is taking from the left. For gold.
BP says, I think I lagged out. What, are you not in voice anymore? BP, can you hear me? Did we lose BP? Oh, sorry. Looks like he's rejoined the assembly hall. All right. Can you hear me now, BP? Yes. All right, welcome I'm back. We lost BP quickly, but we got him back, so that's good. I believe, yeah, I'm, my internet must have messed up or something. I, the game was over for me at a random point, but I think I just lost connection while trying to stream it. So Tipe is starting to get a good supply of gold. Like this is uh, this is gold where you can start making siege. And if you get like three or four onagers out there, then Plush will have to be really careful with these Mangadai. I don't know who won. Still going on. I think what BP was saying was that uh, maybe the game lagged out for him, and it appeared to have ended, but he actually just dropped from spectating it. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I just dropped. So I don't think anybody's won yet, Yo-Yo. But Plush does have a much bigger military than Tipe does at this point. And the Hussar are on their way over to raid Tipe's gold situation. So Tipe with 19 military to Plush Werewolves 54. I think we're starting to get into this post-imp um, Mongol situation where... S Mongols are scary. So they have the time to do what they want to do in post-imperial age. Tipe yep. still missing Bracer for <laughs> these Mangadai. Um, Hussar cleaning up his, his gold miners. He's going to have to send Pikemen over there to protect that from raids. Not mining stone for castles is bad, says Yo-Yo. I think Tipe would have really benefited from maybe a town center or two over here. Yeah, so, there was almost no defense added. They... Both for both of them, they just sent villagers over there. For me personally, I would have made at least a couple small walls. So let me ask you something, BP. Do you want players to be able to town center these cow patties? It, you know, is, uh, is building a town center on top of these cow patties something that you want players to be able to do? Yeah, I think it's fine. And obviously, even if I didn't want it, all they would have to do is mine one of them. And they would have enough, probably enough room for a castle or... TC, uh, I just let it be completely random on how it's generated. If they happen to see that there's four tile space, then they can go for it. Can you castle it? Sometimes you can build castles on this mound, yo-yo, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes there's enough space, and sometimes there's not. Based on the distrib distribution of golds and stones. And by the way, whatever they were feeding these cows is really, really luxurious. Because there's gold mixed in with the cow manure. Yeah. Nutritious. So what do you think, Tech, on seeing this game now, having just some uh, evenly distributed smaller cow patties, maybe like three on either side of the, the players or four um, smaller sizes versus the two big ones? I think that could be good, right? Because the judges look for how much potential do players have to make a comeback if they're behind. And if you're in a situation where your opponent controls both of the gold mines or both of the cow patties, it could be really rough for you to make a comeback. It's still better than Gold Rush, though, which has a single pile of gold. Um, but generally, Gold Rush, the gold can be mined by both players simultaneously, too, because it's a big enough pile. Mm -hmm. So that's really the question you got to ask yourself here is, you know, does do the two cow patties, do they have, like, an equal amount of accessibility? Is it is it um, more or less snowball-y? And, and GG is called by Tipe. Good game. Well played. Thanks to these guys for playing it trying it out and I'll be interested hopefully they're able to join us in chat and uh, give some of their thoughts as well yeah so what do you guys what do you guys in chat think 
Um, what could BP consider for this map? Uh, this is a map that he's going to submit for RMS Cup 2. We want to make friends. We want... I'm not bidding on it, so I don't care how well he does. I mean, I want him to do well, but I'm not like... I don't view him as a competitor for it. Because uh, I'm too I'm too jaded to bid on RMS Cup 2. Uh, I think they need to define their requirements a little bit better. That's my opinion. But he's young. He's full of hope. He's a new scripter. And uh, so we're going to try to try to keep up his optimism here. Yo-Yo says, one deep fish with one to 2,000 food. What do you think about that, BP? I can't say I've ever seen a pond with deep fish in it. Oh, you In mean, real life, at least. Well, Maybe uh, like, some... We can pretend, like some red snapper or something. Well, perch, right? Perch is a valid type of fish, and perch could live in ponds. You guys have oh, yeah, perch there, down there, there are right? perch, aren't they? Yeah. That's actually the standard type of fish is uh is perch here tipe says this is a fine open map it's unquestionably unobjectionable as tipe would say says some deep fish would be good um could consider plush werewolf is here too welcome guys thanks for coming trying it out uh some deep fish would be good plush werewolf says i really enjoyed this map that's good to know, Plush. I'm glad they, they both liked it. So that's good. Um, I have I have two questions for you, um, BP. The first one is, how are you doing the forests? How are you doing the reeds? The reeds, I have just a terrain generation. And I think I have them spread in uh, maybe number of groups or number of clumps is around 12 or so i don't okay. have them spread completely evenly across the whole map i didn't want just like a huge cluster of them but i wanted it possible to, for them some to clump up in a few areas but otherwise it's uh fairly spread out but right. it's, it is just to create terrain so let me see if i can reword the question a little bit better are these reads assigned to players do players have a certain guarantee of getting a certain number of uh, forest patches, if you will? No, it's uh, completely random that in that aspect. Okay. So what I can tell you from my experience is that if you were to take the time to ensure that players get the same number of uh, read patches at the same distance, your, your map will score better in the competitiveness category of the contest. It doesn't. It won't, It may not matter so much what you pick for the distance, but only that the players have the same thing. Plush says okay. honestly, the only thing I missed was the straggler trees. I think the extra hunt and minerals create some good reasons to be aggressive throughout the game. Yeah, I think that's a good point from Plush Werewolf here. Um, no straggler trees, BP. I you know I I didn't even think about that. Did you think about that? Were you like, nah, we're not going to do straggler trees? Um, what's you know what's the line of thinking? For the straggler trees, Honestly, was it intentional or did you do it by accident? Yeah, I don't remember at this point because I haven't been able to work on it uh, within like the past week and a half. But I probably forgot them. I I have messed with straggler trees on a couple of my maps I've messed around with, so I know I know to add them in object generation. But for this, I probably just forgot. Okay. Yeah, because they're they're considered objects. They're not they're not a terrain. Mm -hmm. um, so you place them in the object generation section, and that that allows players to build over them after they've been chopped, even if not all of the wood stored in them has been removed. Yep. So um, if I, I think I might have in one of the videos where I'm working on flow to gono. Um, examples of how player forests are created but i can describe the process to you um plush world says most of my builds require them to be most efficient just something to point out oh that's true okay because some players might depend on straggler trees for built certain build orders which i actually do gotcha. have a 23 pop fc on arena that requires you to chop straggler trees in order to make it work because you build a mill before a lumber camp and then you can't afford a lumber camp because you don't have enough wood um, so that's a good point. That's something to yep. think about. 
Do you have yeah, any other definitely ideas? something I'll need to add. Have any other ideas, Tipe, about things that um, BP could add to this map? Make it, you know, give it some extra pop, some flair, really catch the judge's attention. All right. Um, well, Tipe is thinking about that. The uh, the player force. So what you do is you've got this argument called um, set spacing to player start areas or something to that effect. Let's see, I can I can look up exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. It's in terrain generation. And what it does is it makes it so that any terrain that you spawn will be a certain distance away from players. All right. So you're saying set, set avoid player start areas. Yes. Yep. Set avoid player start areas, so you know it. So it'll make it so that a terrain that you place is a certain distance away. So let's say that your player lands are dirt or whatever, and the base terrain of of your map is also dirt. Um, all right, so Plush has got a little, a few more comments. He says, middle water didn't matter to me. Might matter to someone like Dravidians. It kind of acts like an obstacle similar to the pond on Acropolis. Yeah, we talked about that, Plush. We talked about the possibility of either adding a deep fish that's worth one to 2,000 food, um, and that's done on uh, Canberra, if you've ever seen that map by Zetnus BP. So Canberra uh, no. by Zetnus has has a single deep fish in the middle and some shallows and like a ring around it of water uh, that is worth like 30,000 food. And so it's not uncommon to see players build like three or four docks and try to like throw everything that they can at that fish and build towers <laughs> to try to tower the fish. So you might be able to have a similar effect going on on the map if you choose. Um... So the way that you assign player forests to players specifically is if you have, let's say, a base train of dirt and the player lands are dirt and the, maybe the player lands are small, who knows, and then you put down grass and you tell that grass to avoid player start areas by like 20 tiles or something like that. So imagine that you did that, right? Then you would have a, a ring around the town centers of dirt. And then you put down your forests and you tell the forests and you do them one at a time and you tell the forests to, um, you, you put down three clumps. Actually, no, hold on. So you've got dirt, right? Then you put down a single clump of dirt two, let's say, so that w underneath one of your town centers is dirt and underneath the other is dirt two. Okay. And then you tell your forests to place three clumps exactly on dirt two. And then it'll put three forest clumps on dirt two. And then it'll leave the other one because it's not the right terrain type. And you can tell those forests to avoid the town centers. Then you take that dirt two and you convert it back into grass. And then you repeat the process eight times until every player has, you know, their three or their four forests. So gotcha. I can send you a section of code for Flotagano where I I do that. It's not going to be with dirt. It's like with desert um, and dirt. So it's not going to be with dirt and grass. But it's the same type of concept. And you could, you could change it over to make sure that each player gets the same number of assigned forests. Because the judges care about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and... I wish that I could take credit for that idea, but that's actually not my idea. I don't know who came up with that idea, but I know that Krasini has done it on basically all of his all of his maps to make sure that players have the same number of forests. So it's a, it's a pretty useful technique to be able to do. Yeah, I, I can definitely do that. If you send me um, a section that looks like that, I can mimic. Yeah, currently I have create terrain reads, Base terrain grass, obviously, because grass fills the whole area. Uh, land percent two, number of quick clumps twelve, and then avoid player star areas fourteen. And then, so 
for both players, they should at least have reads 14 tiles out or farther, mm -hmm. but then also spacing to other terrain types five. So apparently I did take that into account and keep them away from the forest. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would recommend is I would actually, and depends on where you want to go with this directly, but it seemed like the players were pretty comfortable just walling up and booming in Castle Age. If you wanted to make... So Yo-Yo Dude says the mid-pond is free 600 to 800 food. Um, for what it's worth, the reeds seem pretty well-spaced. I don't know if you notice something different as a caster. No, I agree they're well-spaced. Um, but what the judges are going to look for is they're going to look to make sure that the reeds that each player like has exactly the same number of forests at the same distance. Now, you can still add, and you should add, neutral reed patches throughout the pasture. Number one, because it looks good. Number two, because the players will appreciate it. Um, and those are very simple. You basically just add them the same way that you made your reads initially, except you give them some large avoidance to player town centers like 30. Yeah. Right? So you do your, your player assigned reads first, and then you can do your neutral forests after that. Um, and you can set it to 30 tiles or something so they're just far away, and it's obvious that they're neutral reads. Yeah, there are lots of potential strats for a lot of different sieves here, which I like. Gurjars could collect all the cows. Um, yeah, I like this map too. It depends on where you want to go. I think if you wanted, what do you, and chat can sort of weigh in on this. I think um, if you wanted to make this map more aggressive, you could decrease the radius of the player start. And that would do two things. Number one, it would obviously bring the players closer together. So somebody doesn't have to go as far to drush or go archers or something like that. Um, the other thing that it would do, though, is it would actually move players further away from the good ring of wood on the outside. And everybody knows that when wood lines, when good wood is far away, when good li wood lines are far away, it's a recipe for disaster, right? There's there's more likelihood that your villagers are going to get caught out um, by scouts as they're walking out there. It could be that uh, the villagers maybe don't have the time to wall to the town center, so you have to small wall, and maybe you know maybe your opponent is able to get some aggression on your small walls. Maybe you get some archers over there, and then small walls are useless. Um, so I think you're going to have more variety and strategy if you pull these town centers a little bit closer to the center. That's just my advice, though. Ultimately, this map needs to be what you want it to be. And who knows? Maybe chat disagrees with me. I think it's it's um, it doesn't affect the competitiveness of the play or anything like that at all. I think, um, yeah, I could... I I think bringing them a little closer, I'm not sure how much farther I would go. Um, but that way, I mean, even sending Vils to the pond itself, I'll definitely consider adding like a a, a tile or two of perch with a lot of uh, high resource delta. Um, but even with the town center closer to the pond, then their villagers would be safer, depending on if I make it wallable or not, um, if right. they tried to get back to their town center. Because because nobody nobody went fish this time. Maybe they would if the fish were closer to the town center and it were a little bit safer to take. Mm -hmm. um, other ideas. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that the two cow patties? Do you think that this, you know, that this is better than having a lot of little cow patties scattered across the map? We could actually test both for them and see what people's opinions are on them. So Plush says, I like these ideas. TC's closer could be cool for sure. It would incentivize taking shorefish. But as it stands, I really enjoy this map. Hats off to the creator. Oh yeah, we're always looking to make friends, try new maps. The community loves this sort of thing. Is this map um, configured for more than two players in a 1v1 situation? I, no, I I've, okay. I've generated it. Um, I've generated it in the larger player and it, because of the current mound setup it, it creates uh what like however many players you have it creates another mound between them because they, it is a player land but then because of the gold and stone distribution i have set uh eventually some of them have almost no gold or stone or there's no cows spawning on all, almost most of them uh, it would i would have to like mess with a lot of that in order to make it work on larger maps and more players okay 
so we'll just note that this is a 1v1 map for now, but if you uh, if you ever wanted to test it in a larger setting, let us know and we'll we'll call in the cavalry. Um, yeah, we'll get the guys. They're always begging me for FFA so they can they can backstab <laughs> me and kill my king. So it plus, might end up plus being makes a good point here. He said uh, smaller ones would make it just seem like normal neutral resources. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. that I think that's true, depending on the size and what we do. Um, if I just dotted a bunch of them with a small amount of gold and stone on each, then that's just like Arabia, just a little bit different. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's a, that's actually a very good point. So maybe just having them as they are. And you do have you do you do have two of them, right? It's not like you it's not like the neutral pond is essential. It's not like they're all where the pond would be. And just whoever yeah. council drops it first wins. There are two, right? So there's there's the possibility for the players to collect from both. What do we think about people being able to build on these cow patties? Do we think it's it's just about right? Do we think that um it's not buildable enough, or do we think that uh, it should be more buildable? Or it should be less buildable, I should say. So more or less ability to build on these cow patties is my next question. Could have a conversation about that. Because on one of these, it looked like initially somebody could put down a town center or a castle here, and they did. I don't know if they could on the other one. And we saw yeah, I'm some not town seeing centers space on for side. it. So good, bad, I don't know. Um, easy I, to raid, uh, though, with lots of mining camps there. We saw lots yeah. of villagers go down to raids. So we can see if what Tipe or Plush think about that. I, um, I was fine with the possibility of a TC or castle being being enough room before even anything's mined. Uh, but then, like the other one, obviously, I don't think I see four by four tiles. Uh, I'm fine with a little bit of randomness with that. Uh, just depends. With in regards to the pond. Right now, I think it's mostly aesthetic. Like, you think of a just a watering pond in a pasture. You don't really have uh, shallows around it or anything, but making it a shallow for people to, to not be able to wall it off might be more interesting. I'm not sure. So, Plush Werewolf says, I agree with what he said earlier. It's easy to TC after mining a pile or two, so it might as well keep it as is. Um, just another reward for good scouting. So if you do go through and you put um, a deep fish in this pond, the BP, then you probably shouldn't have shallows making the deep fish accessible. Because if you do have the deep fish, then um, if you don't, if you make it so that players can just walk there, they'll just build a mill and they'll just mill the deep fish. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll also have to make sure that that deep fish is spaced such that it is not possible to collect from the shore. Because maps where you can collect deep fish with villagers are not seen as the most competitive. You know, force them to make a dock to, uh, to collect that deep fish. Very true. Um, any other ideas for, um, for BP here? Things to consider. And again, you know, it's BP's map. He should definitely do what he wants with it. They're just kind of throwing ideas out for him to think about. So if you do move the players in closer to the center of the map, you may consider making the outside ring of wood perhaps a little bit thicker. The other thing that I thought might be fun was uh, maybe you could make a one-tile gap. <laughs> a one or a two tile gap in this wood line if it were thicker that if you chop through you could actually walk all the way around to the other side and build a tower on your opponent's <laughs> wood line that could be cheeky um yeah that'd be pretty that'd be very cheeky it would be cool to like if it was pretty thick you could make randomized trails through it kind of like um mad catters uh which map is it crop circles i think he has like randomized trails within the trees, but uh, I don't. I don't think I would bother on this one. So I would agree. Moving the TCs a little f closer together, I would probably make the wood line a tile or two thicker. So that's definitely something to consider. 
So Plush says, to be honest, I don't think deep fish makes sense with the theme. The shore fish are enough to make it interesting. Uh, sieves like Dravidians will like it, and it's just free res either way. Yeah, so if you don't do the deep fish in the pond, then I recommend the pond to be shallow and walkable. If you do do the deep fish in the pond, then the pond should not be walkable. Yeah, that's definitely uh, something I'll think about. I do want to try to keep it on theme. Yep. Not just have something kind of random. Don't be so, a yeah, sellout. I'll, uh, I'll mess around with both options, see what I decide. Um, you've got bush objects that you can use to beautify the map. So you could put bushes at the edge of your your wood line here. Azure shallows would work, says Plush Werewolf. Plush, have you ever been to South Carolina? I think the water's all muddy. you got to put muddy shallow. <laughs> um, Need some orange water. Jaw zero zero here. So you've got green water. You've got all kinds of water choices actually that could look really good, and you can have all kinds of terrain masking. It looks like you've done some light terrain masking of uh, mud here across the pasture. Yep. So you can definitely you've done some of it. But there, I think there's a lot of opportunity to beautify this map further with more terrain masking and more of that useless eye candy. Plush says do the green water. He thinks the green water would look good for real. I green do have water. a question on that with, cause I use um, personally useless plant remover. Mm -hmm. So would that get rid of the bushes? Like you were saying, they're just aesthetic. Uh, no, some of the bushes are just aesthetic, but there's actually like DLC bush, which is just some object. That's just a, that's it's a tree, but it looks like a bush. So it would not remove that. Does that have wood on it? Yes, it has wood storage in it. So okay. it's choppable and they can actually chop the wood. So you could actually use that for your stragglers if you wanted. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's actually a good idea. So in addition to the reeds being being grasses, and of course you could put all those grasses in there too. Um, it depends on a lot of people's taste, but a lot of the pros use the useless plant remover, and that's what it's removing So it clutters things up. So green versus brown water. The chat can't seem to agree on green versus brown water. I think that's just a matter of personal preference. Um, ultimately, BP is going to look at it and make the decision. It's going to go out and survey some ponds in the area. Yeah. See which ones have mostly green and which ones have mostly brown water. Cows Walk will drink it either way, though, right? They don't care. That's right. Uh, you and I look at that and turn up our noses and be like, how can anyone want to drink that? But the cows are just like, <laughs> gulp, gulp, gulp. I guess one question, uh, the beach the or the sand you see around the pond, that's obviously default generation because of the water. I didn't add that. Is there mm -hmm. a way to change that to just be grass or is that going to always happen? So you like can't... make it make it a darker green so it looks like uh, watered grass or something. But uh, yeah. so what you can do is instead of putting down water, as I'm assuming you're creating that with a land, right? A land at position 50 50, if memory serves. Uh, yes, let's see. Yep. I mean, you I did. you were the expert, so you got the script in front of you. I, it's not really my place to pull up your script on stream unless I'm doing a specific, like trying to help you debug. Stream, but we already tried that and you uh, didn't go very well. So what you do is instead of putting down water as your land, you, you can just put down something like DLC Wet Beach. And it'll put brownish sand down. And then you can, in your terrain section, you can layer with a spacing to other terrain types water and you can space it one. So what that will do is it'll basically just change your beach to a sandy beach that looks like dark sand instead. There are all kinds of beach options, actually. You could make it a rocky-looking beach. Um, so you could, do, you could do a lot. Let's see if there are any beaches that jump out at me here as good options for you. AOE two terrains. There we go. Oh, Jaw Zero Zero says I think you can somehow remove the beach with terrain state, but I never used that. I know that you can have um, you can put water non-interactable down. 
Am I needed for another playtest tech? Yes, Blush. If you want to do another playtest, we've got another map that we can playtest. And uh, Pure Savagery, he's going to try to catch the video of us playtesting his map and offering feedback. I don't know if he's personally here and available yet. He had something else going on. So, but we're going to, we are going to play another map here. And we might actually even play this again, depending on what, um, if, how quickly BP can modify it if he wants. But that's what we're doing this afternoon is basically play testing maps. Okay, so there's number 28 here, BP, which is no beaches, walkable, not navigable, um, no buildings, and it's produced by bridge objects. So no beaches, not dockable. Actually, it's this one right here, water 2D shoreless. So it's number 15 on the mm -hmm. constants list. So if you wanted, you could, hey, Zerg, you could put that down. Um, and there would be no beaches, so nobody would be able to dock it. And you could actually put the shore fish down, um, and they would. I think they'd still be able to take the shore fish, but they wouldn't be able to build a dock. Um, and they would they would be able to wall to it, obviously. So that water right there is your best bet. Uh, they'd be able to wall to it, the edge of it, just fine. So they, but what you could do is you could actually put like, you could put down DLC rock actually, where is it? You could put down DLC rock and then you could layer this, um, non-interactable water on top of it. And then maybe try to put, maybe try to put some, some fish on top of that. I haven't tried putting too many objects on this non-interactable water so i'm not sure how it works but you could experiment with it is where i'm getting at yeah oh well uh yeah i'll definitely mess with that let's see i have all these notes written down um you could experiment with upgrading your animals like you could upgrade if you want horses and cows just wandering wildly in this pasture for decoration you can like upgrade camels to a specific type of cow that you're not using. Or you could, there's all kinds of farm animals, right? You could have pigs too. Pigs are disgusting though. Pigs smell so bad. <laughs> if you ever have a neighbor that wants to get pigs, oh man, it's unlucky if your neighbor, mm -hmm. if your neighbor decides that he wants to, he wants to, to start a pig farm. There's not much you can do about it because pigs smell so bad. That's for sure. Um, so Tipe says, I wouldn't mind playing another game as well. Okay. So Tipe is over in Hungary, actually. Pigs can be mean too, says Zerg. That's true, especially if they get out. If they get out, actually, pigs can become feral and they start growing tusks and fur and they actually become wild boars again. Okay. Um, so does any anybody have anything else for, um, for BP before we turn him loose to... Uh, to work on his map, script his map, and we'll try another map. And I guess if he if he gets like if he gets to a point where he wants us to try it out again later, we can. Depends on if we're still. Yeah, I'll definitely. Uh, I'll try to work on this in a couple of hours or so. Um, I'll have to get off for a little while, but if y'all are still going later this evening, I can definitely rejoin. See what's up. Okay. Um. Perfect. So if nobody else has anything for uh, BP, we'll thank him for his time. Thanks for giving us something to talk about in this community. We love new things. We love new creations. Um, it's important for people to feel love over their their work. Like it's important for people to feel like what they do matters and like that there's merit to it, and it's not just the same four guys making everything um, and doing everything. Because sometimes people are afraid of new stuff and afraid of changes. So. If there's something that we can do to help you improve the quality of your script, make sure you think about everything. I mean, you're going to be the expert, but we're just going to ask the questions here, um, and you are you're you're going to be able to answer those questions the best. So we'll ask him; he'll answer them, and uh, the map will be better off for it. Whatever whatever his answer is. Yeah, this was definitely very helpful. So. With that, we'll say farewell to BP. Thanks for your time, and we will we will do another map now. Um, and this map was made by Pure Savagery. Let me send him a message. Uh, see if he wants to come.
but I can send Plush and uh, and Tipe a new the the version of Separated that I have. Yeah, thank you for your time. Yep, and I will talk to you later. Yep, see you, BP. Thank you. Manuel Ledesmas is here. He says hi. Uh, Plush World says thank you, BP. This map is looking good. Um. So the good news is, is that we actually did do a session with Pure Savagery before where he explained his map in its entirety. Go and look it up on my channel. Um, because I'm just a pleb content creator, I don't actually have a link to share with you right now where you can just go and click it. But I promise that I it's like one of the past two or three videos or something like that. So he actually talks about what he wants to do with Separated. We're going to show it real quick. So we'll exit out of here, and uh, I will send the script to. I will send the script to Plush and Tipe, and uh, they can continue their grudge match. But if anybody else wants to play on TV, let me know. But these these two are great because they're similar level, and I also like both of them very much. So like if we want if Yo Yo wants to play, we could try to find Yo Yo an opponent. And um, again, it'd be way better if BP were here, but it, you know, it's fine. He's he's already talked about it, and he'll catch the video later, and you guys can share your thoughts about it. So, looking over the achievements real quick. I mean, look at this KD for Plush Werewolf. How is the scripting going today? I'm not doing scripts today, Pyramid. I am uh, helping to review some scripts that were made by other scripters for the RMS Cup 2. Yo-Yo is playing a poor pleb for attorney. 1100 ELO feels bad. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like, I, I've seen, in situations like that, you don't stream your point of view and you hope that nobody casts it. Because sometimes, based on the players that are available and the ELOs of different people, uh, it's not really worth, worth showing in that case. But look at this KD for... Yeah, those those darn mangadies, and uh, it was just it's just trash KD, right? We looked at that. We sort of evaluated the strategy. Tipe seemed like he teched into full trash. Um, it was like, well, I'm I, you know I feel like going out and trying to secure these cow patties is a is a big investment that I don't want to make. I'll I'll get trash. I'll push him off the cow patties with trash, and then I'll take the gold and I'll finish him with gold units. It looked like that was where Tipe was going with it. Should have gone heavy knights. No, Tipe, I think the play for you was uh, actually crossbows and R blisters with chemistry. You would have absolutely shredded everything he was making. But then again, Plush may have just gone into siege at that point. It's hard to say. But since Mongols are missing the final armor on their cavalry, and on their cavalry archers too, which, which sucks as well, they just absolutely tear through uh, Hussars. It's it's a disaster. Every time that I'm up against Mongols as Byzantines, if I can, I'll make crossbows and arbalisters. Yeah, you forgot you forgot bracer plush, um, or at least you did for the longest time. Mangan, I have bonus damage versus siege. I mean, yes, but it's still siege. Still flattens things. All right, so let me just show you guys what separated looks like first, so you get a flavor of it, and you guys can pick your sieves. Um, let's come down here. I should have it in my folder. Should be able to generate it to show you guys what it looks like. I don't think he's done. I don't think he's he hasn't sent me a virgin version since this, so. Let's see. Nope, no separated. So give me one sec, guys. Let me toss this in the folder. We saw that you basically bought imp with uh, wood that you sold plush. Tipe really kept you on your toes with those scouts. Tipe, he loves going scouts. Oops, game just crashed. All right, that's fine. We will simply launch it again. <clears throat>
Okay, we got separated in the folder now. So Jaws 0 says, maybe I will also submit a map if I get to work on it before the deadline. Uh, Plush World says, the price was decent enough, probably saved my neck. That's true. Uh, if you had not been able to click up at that point, I, I believe Tipe would have beaten you. Yes, I think that's a fair statement. So Jaws 0 are you talking about you, you're not sure if you're going to submit a map for the RMS uh, Cup 2? Or are you talking about like doing this exercise where we got a couple of guys... And like maybe like the thirteen to fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred level, play it, give some feedback. Because we would love to take a look at one of the maps that uh, that you've got, Jaw Zero Zero, if uh, if you have time. All right, let's make sure that we got this map now. And let me also uh, send this map over to Plush and Tipe. Unless somebody else wants to play on TV. Because if they do, we'll give them priority if they haven't played yet. Okay. Okay, so I posted it to the modding and map support channel, separated.rms. You should be able to see it. And let's generate it now. We can look at the map if you want. It would be helpful for sure. Yeah, we'd love to do that. Jaw00 will be next if he wants to be. We prefer to focus on things that people are going to submit for competitions for like competitive play. All right, separated, step, Serpinski, wait, what? Where is it? Still not here. Got X lands here. Do we need to restart the game again? Still in the folder, right? Oh, I guess the game is going to restart for us. The game is so good at crashing. But that's just a part of life. So you guys should have the map. You can download it. But we're going to take a look at it on stream just to review for folks that weren't there last time. It's a game and a crash machine, says Zerg. Okay. Let's try to try to see if let's see if the game will show us separated now. What am I doing wrong? Is it at the bottom somehow? Yes, it is. I don't know how, but it is. So this is how it looks, boys. So it's a lot like Hideout. The tentacles are... Well, they're exactly that. They're tentacles. So, big patches of deer... But the map is also easy to wall, so it might not be as good for Mongols. I'm not really sure. So 
So this is going to be your next battlefield. Oh, did I spell it wrong? He also added more resources all over the map. I don't think this changed since we looked at it last. Does it make those tentacles between players in team game and FFA? So um, we're not going to look at it in um, in more player situations because he, he's not got the map set up for that yet. But yes, uh, we did accidentally generate that once or twice. And uh, yes, it does make more tentacles between the players. But the, the resources don't spawn exactly the way that he wanted. So right now he's happy with it for 1v1. But he's also going to add more features. So are Plush and Tipe ready to uh, battle it out on this map? Send me the link if so. It only had the big resources last time I saw it. One sec. I will be right back while well, those guys are getting a lobby set up. I'm going to refill my water here, and empty the tank, and then when we get back, we're going to see them in action, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to give it a try, and um, we'll have a discussion, and hopefully that'll be helpful to pure savagery. So I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Jaw zero zero is getting anxious. I can see it in the chat. He's like, it only had the big resources the last time I saw it. I just read that as him being so excited. All right, let's go. All right, you boys ready? Testing new maps. Here we go. Separated. We're going to spectate with Capture Age. You're right, but I'm always anchors. Oh, okay. The way that the Hulk learned to control his anger by always being angry. I understand. Okay. So it's thinking. We're loading in. What? The request timed out? Can't do that to me. All right. Um... Oh, all right, I have to say yes first. So we got Plush Werewolf as the Hindustanis versus Tipe as the Khmer. That's interesting. So is Tipe is Tipe going to do the whole small wall Khmer FC thing and then go into Knights and just crush the Hindustanis? Problem is, the Hindustanis have lots of camels. So maybe Plush Werewolf secretly saw Tipe pick the Khmer. Maybe it was, uh, maybe they didn't hide the pick. And so he picked Hindustanis to get all those Knights out. I don't necessarily mind that it's not in Capture Age, though. I can't even see it here. Whatever. We'll watch it in-game normally. Ah, okay. So in the blue, we have Tipe. Tipe is playing as the Khmer. And he's sort of like on the, I would say, around 7 or 8 o'clock. Let's put it like 7.30. And Plush Werewolf over here at 2 o'clock or 1.30 o'clock. Oh, the Ballista Elephants and Cut the Trees. Smart. I didn't think about that. He's totally going to do that. Emu Warriors here. Emu, welcome. Everything is better. Every story that has a good villain is made more interesting and better. So we are glad that you're here, Emu Warrior. All right. So so Jaw00 thinks it could be the Ballista Elephants. That would be very fascinating. Um, Tipe has got six on his sheep. And we've got uh, Plush Werewolf doing the same here, bringing in, he's finding some of his sheep in here. Now, uh, Pure Savager was telling me that he he worked very hard to make sure that all of your starting sheep and all of, like your food are going to be within you know your enclosed space. Your main gold, your main stone will be, but your secondary minerals will be outside, and there will be more of them. So it's a very you know it's a very similar hideout. It's very similar to hideout, except I think it could be more aggressive. Because you want to fight over these these gold and stone resources. So Tipe, he's building a mining camp. Look at where he's built this mining camp. This I think this tells us a lot, right? Tipe is building his mining camp on this main wood in the middle. Which means he's not planning on cutting through to one of these outside arms. Which tells me that Tipe wants to do an FC here. He's also pushing in his deer. Now... This actually looks like a follow deer push. Maybe not. Because you can push in deer a little bit more effectively if you hit the follow button. All right, there we go, Tipe. Shoot her! There we go. He, all right, he got the deer in. So he's pushed in one deer. There are plenty of deer to push in. Um, plush Werewolf taking his sheep. I don't think Plush has pushed deer any, uh, yet, actually. Let's change to Plush's point of view and toggle the fog of war. No, Plush hasn't been pushing his deer. He's, he is exploring. So Plush desires information about where Tipe is and what he's up to. 
And there's nothing wrong with that, too. Uh, like Crazy Joe says. Everybody, anybody who knows Crazy Joe, he's he, oh, he's pretty crazy, but he's a lot of fun. And he's got a lot of wise words. And his number one piece of advice to new players is scouting. If you know what your opponent is up to, it will help you develop strategies and make decisions to counter him. So here comes Plush. He knows his opponent's got to be over here. Come on, Plush, don't forget about the scout. All right, he's moving again. And we got a mill from Plush. We got Plush on the board. And Plush is doing... Actually, Plush wants the middle, too. He's not, he's not chopping one of the arms, which is kind of surprising to me. We're separated, all right, says Plush. Yes. You are. And it actually is taking the scout a little while to get over here. All right. So Plush will have five on berries. The boars are a little bit further out. Did he get loom? No, he did not get loom. So he's going to have to be careful. Uh, Plush losing his scout to the town center. So that is very unfortunate for him. And it's a good thing that losing that scout didn't distract him, though, from his boar lure. Like, he still gets his boar in successfully, and no villager goes down. So that's important. So meanwhile, Tipe, what is Tipe up to? So Tipe has pushed in two deer, and he is on his way up to the feudal age. Whoa, Tipe, look at this. I should have seen this coming. Tipe has not even built a mill yet. He's got three on wood. And he is on his way up to the Feudal Age at 16 pop. This is a 16 pop Mongol, not Mongol, Khmer Scouts build. I just accidentally said Mongol because I remember when Yo-Yo first joined our clan, he would not stop talking about Mongol fast scouts. He's like, I got this 15 pop Scouts build as Mongols, and it's super OP. He loved it. Okay, it looks like Tipe is going to come back and push another deer in. Hey, Old Forever Young is here. Hello and welcome. We are casting a game here on a new map developed by a friend of mine called Pure Savagery. And um, he is looking for feedback on this map. He wants to try to get the best possible score in the scripting contest. So we got some guys that love trying out new things. And we said that's right up our alley. So let's do it. Okay, so Tipe is now Feudal Age. He's, he has built his mill, and he's getting double bit axe. Okay, and he's got his stable foundation down. Interesting. So Tipe has kind of found the edge of where this tentacle is, and he's going to wall this way. So he's up to Feudal Age really fast. If I'm Plush Werewolf, I get scared about that. What's Plush up to? So Plush may not have known that Tipe was going scouts, but he'll probably see that time. 13 pop into nothing strat. Um, it is very it is very low population. Um, so Plush was probably, to be fair, he was probably planning on building a barracks first. Um, but now he's going to be... Oh no, Plush, don't do this. Don't do this. I guess he really needs the food, but this deer is not secure at all. He's not feudal age yet. Maybe he feels like he's got enough time. Like, maybe, you know, he sees the feudal age time. He figures, based on where Tipe is, that it'll take the scouts too long to get over here. And he can have some... He can have some uh, spearmen ready for when that happens. Okay, let's see what Tipe is up to with Tipe's dastardly plans. And the scouts are already moving out across the map. Tipe knows how many neutral resources there are. He knows it's a large percentage. And he's got another scout coming out. And Tipe could actually find Plush Werewolf. Oh, Plush, he's so lucky. So Tipe is going to go for the berries instead. And Plush is just hitting Feudal Age now. And Tipe gets one villager kill. Is he going to get another? He gets two villager kills. And this scout is still on stand ground, otherwise it would have been three. Ouch. So Plush Werewolf not really walling it out. The Spearman is, Spearman is out now. And Tipe is going to go for this weak villager. Try to get her. And he does. So Tipe has gotten three villager kills on Plush so far. 
and he's going to try to get uh, another. He gets one more. Four villagers down. Ouch. So Tipe is at 23 villagers, and Plush Werewolf is at 22, actually. And Tipe has scouted this mill here. So now Plush reacts immediately. He knows, hey, there's a scout here. I, I need to make sure I don't let this scout get any villager kills. But I would say that these fast scouts were definitely worth it. Uh, if Tipe had found this originally with his original wave of scouts, uh, I think it would have been GG. The, all of these villagers would have gotten killed. So there's a spearman here. Tipe doesn't want to fight that. So he, these scouts are both weak. He cannot kill that spearman, so he's going to have to go look for someone else, something else to pick on. 25 HP, too. Oh, uh, are you guys telling me that Plush just finished uh, just finished getting Loom? Tipe is back in here. We'll have to check that. Maybe I missed that. That would be a big deal if Plush had only recently gotten Loom. Tipe is very good at being annoying with scouts. That I can tell you. Let's d disable the fog of war for now and see what Tipe's plans are. Tipe has not made any more scouts. He's got a farming eco up. He's putting more on gold, so he's going to click up to Castle Age here pretty soon. Okay, he does manage to... Plush manages to kill Tipe's last scout that he's aware of. Plush does not know that there's one more scout over here. And Tipe is going to have to come up next to this town center and try to pick off a villager. So Plush Werewolf at 27 villagers and Tipe at 30. So Tipe has a three villager lead. Looks like Tipe was able to kill three villagers over Plush when you factor in town center idle time. Let's see how Plush's resources are looking. Plush is actually close to clicking up, so Plush literally did nothing. Uh, what was Plush's plan? Like, Spearman into nothing? So Tipe sees the Spearman runs away. He's got a market. He's got a blacksmith. And the plan for Plush is just FC. Just build a barracks, make some defensive spears, and then go fast castle. And he paid for it. He paid three villagers to make it happen. But maybe it'll be worth it. Who knows? So here comes Tipe. Oh, changes his mind. Looking for a little bit more damage. And where's Tipe at? Tipe has not clicked up yet. So Tipe is starting to wall this side off. Or continuing this wall, I should say. And he's got something down here too. Okay, so he is walling that off. So neither player are going to go for these neutral resources on, this, on the other sides of these tentacles. Probably because, you know, they, they haven't really taken any of their primary resources yet. All right, so Tipe is on the stone, so we are definitely going to see Ballista Elephants. Per Jaws00's prediction, Ballista Elephants are correct. Tipe picking on this villager over here, which means that Plush Werewolf has to walk all the way around to fight that scout. And is Tipe going to get the kill? No. So he did not dive the town center. I think it's because Plush was paying attention. Um, but there are lots of weak villagers underneath this town center. He could have gone after. So Blacksmith coming down for Tipe, and Tipe is on his way up to the Castle Age now. So he has a big score lead on Plush, but Plush is going to be Castle Age pretty soon, so I think that that score lead will be negated. Let's see how Plush's score jumps as soon as he hits Castle Age. Yeah, and it suddenly becomes neck and neck again. So instantly another Town Center Foundation coming down for Plush right here next to one of these tentacles. So he wants to chop through and get to these golds and stones on the other side. Okay, and Tipe is almost done walling his side off. So what does Tipe know about plush werewolves' activities here? Does he does he expecting to be attacked? Is he expecting a boom? Tipe still has a score lead, and he's almost castle age now. So he has 36 villagers, and plush werewolf has 31 villagers. So we'll see, you know, how that we'll keep an eye on that villager count moving forward into the game. Tipe building a Khmer farm out here. This is clever. Um, 
I didn't get this at first glance, but it looks like this villager is basically just going to farm out here so that if Tipe needs to build anything behind these walls to strengthen them against an attack, he has that available. Okay, and again, he's got a reinforcement villager farming out here too. So Khmer bonus is, of course, that they don't need a mill to drop off their resources, and Tipe is going to build a market now. But Tipe should... Uh, what's he going to do, actually? He's got lots of food. He's got lots of gold. Is he... He's just waiting for the last of his stone to collect, and then he's going to build a castle? Yep. And he's going to chop through and attack Plush Werewolf with some Ballista Elephants. So, no boom from Tipe so far. And he could actually almost go fast in as soon as this castle goes up. But Khmer can be pretty scary with um, with with lots of gold. But he's gonna he's gonna elect into battle elephants actually. So he's got a few he's got some battle elephants queued up at this stable. I thought he was gonna cut through. Maybe he still will. Maybe he'll do like a two pronged attack. So Tipe with forty one villagers and Plush Werewolf now with forty six. So Plush is booming on three town centers and he's trying to catch up in economy and you can see the scores are flipping back and forth. So Plush has. Not very much military, though. He's got, what, maybe five military? And they're basically three spearmen and two camels. So Tipe, yeah, let's look back at Tipe, because Tipe is really the one that's kind of going to be the instigator for this. And he does have Ballista Elephants queued here. Now, I think Ballista Elephants are food and gold, so Tipe might want to, yeah, he's throwing down more farms. He's definitely going to cut through. But he's got battle elephants too, which maybe he's going to create a diversion with the battle elephants. I'm not I'm not totally sure. We'll see. He's starting to transition these villagers off of this wood line though, which is not going to be safe because he's about to cut through. And we've got Battle Elephants moving across the map, too. He's getting Bloodlines. I don't think we're going to see any more Battle Elephants out of this stable, though. I think these Battle Elephants are just a distraction. Okay, so he's got 44 Villagers, and Plush has 60. So Plush is definitely starting to pull ahead in the Villager count. He needs Pikes plus Ballistas plus two Mangoes. Now, what do the Mangonels do? Are they, you mean just Siege for taking down Town Centers? So Plush is going to go onto the stone now. So it looks like it was kind of an FC into maybe a boom and then cut through here and then expand to the resources. Oh, Plush saying, bro, seize the elephants. So Plush, me no like elephants. And here comes another stable, probably for some more camels. Camels can fight off elephants. It's not, you know, it's not the most cost-effective trade. But these four elephants should be able to take care of this. At least put a big dent. Yeah, okay. So he, he didn't lose any elephants from that. And here's Tipe cutting through now. Okay, the elephants are on Plush's gold now, taking Plush off of gold. And suddenly Plush is not as walled as he thought he was. He's got elephants under his town center. Now, do you guys know how well camels do against ballista elephants? I don't know that they really do that well. <clears throat> Okay, so Tipe's got a forward villager here. What's the plan? I think he wants to build a siege workshop. Wait, did Plush just delete that house? Tipe absolutely loves Ballista Elephants, though. Yep, so it's for a siege workshop, like Jaw007 said. So I'm wondering if... Um, it was a mistake for Tipe to send those battle elephants in first. Plush deleting his stable, so Tipe is going to camp in this little space in the gold. 
Now, camels don't have the best pierce armor, and there are 12 units here still. And Plush Werewolf calls the GG Tipe with the Ballista Elephant Masterpiece on this map. So Jaws 0, Zero says they do bonus damage and don't take that much damage if they can surround. So the players will join us in chat here in a minute and they'll share their thoughts about the map. Tipe coming up with a really great strategy for this map though. I don't know if it was over, though. I mean, Hindustani's... I guess he was off of gold. He was off of gold, and that hurts. Maybe he could have expanded somewhere else to get gold. So you can't... Without gold, you can't make monks. And without monks, you can't convert the ballista elephants. He was making camels, but the camels were not that effective. It's a quick game. I resigned too quick, but those ballistas uh, stacked in one tile were unremovable. Some strange mechanic equals uh, scorpions kill forest. GG. That choke point was super unlucky. You mean right here when the gold? Yeah, this gold was uh, was pretty unlucky. You got tilted? Tipe getting his revenge. No, I think all credit where credit's due, right? Tipe thought up a strategy for this map and it worked. But it was still close. Had you been able to get the surround on these on these ballista elephants, it could have been a very different game. Because he was he was basically all in, one town center. Tipe, he was still making villagers. No, he wasn't. He had been making villagers until recently, though. Tipe says it's similar to Hideout. Very nice take on a closed map. All right, boys, what other maps do we have to play? You got a map, Jaws00, zero zero, you want us to play? Old Forever Young says, Plush Werewolf, you cool. Plush Werewolf has a fan. Plush Werewolf says, I like the map. Need some eye candy, probably. And honestly, this map could go full straight lines and symmetry. Um, actually, Plush, I did send um, Pure Savagery a, a version of this that has the straight line, um, the straight line tentacles. The X. But he declined. He declined to use it because it was it, it was some advanced code, and it was I think this is his first map. He was saying, so he uh, he he wanted to keep it simple. And the generation for what you see here does not involve any code written by Tech Chariot or a program of Tech Chariots. So it, it was a little simpler. It was a little easier for him to start out with. So that's why we have this configuration here. Let me ask you guys though, like this is an important part of the conversation, and Pure Savagery is going to come in. And he's going to watch the recording, and we should have this conversation. Um, I mean, would he be better off if these tentacles were straight? You know, should this should this map have straight tentacles? Or does it not matter? What are the reasons for or against the straight tentacles? 
So it's more of an X. Just some suggestions. So, you, so why why would full straight lines and symmetry be be valuable or useful? Zerg doesn't think it matters. John zero zero says curved tentacles feel more organic. Tipe says he thinks it's fine as is. Okay. Other thoughts about this. We did talk about this. He wants to add some elevation. So random scattered elevation, eye candy. Uh, we talked about the possibility of making the center land in the middle hollow and put in, putting something cool in there worth fighting over. Maybe some relics. So Plush says, I think if they're straight, uh, the map can be more predictable and balanced. But I don't think it's that important. Okay, fair enough. I, I did offer him some, some straight ones, but... There are advantages and disadvantages to both. What do you guys think about the amount, like the amount of resources in these neutral spaces? Are these worth it? Zerg says, I think maybe split the straight edge forests up. Really? So make like little gaps in here where you can go through. Tipe says, I think the wood in the middle is is in the middle worth fight. I think the wood is in the middle worth fight. Uh, okay. Plus Royal says, I think it's 100% worth it and necessary. What are you guys talking about now? The Oh, the, the big wood in the center? The neutral res is a must. So you guys mean these neutral res here. Because these are player assigned resources out here, technically. So Plush says, my main gold got denied and I had nothing else until I could chop. That's true. Plush, he could have come out here and built a town center out here and taken map control. And maybe it would have been a different game, because maybe he wouldn't have cared if this gold had gotten denied. He would have had to come out here and build a town center on this gold. Uh, we did talk to Pure Savagery. He might do a little bit of experimentation with these deer. Maybe he doesn't need so many deer out here. I'm not sure. He was going to experiment with putting a ring of wood around the outside, with potentially building or putting unbuildable terrain so you can't wall it off. The player assigned res should stay in, says Tipe. It makes the map more interesting. I agree. So Jaw Zero Zero with an interesting idea though. Put two golds in the base. So like um, break up these big gold piles into two smaller gold piles in the base. So that if one of them does get denied, you do have another place you can go for gold. I think that's what Jaw Zero Zero means. That would uh, lessen the consequences of giving away the golds on the outside of the, the separation though. So like right now, if you give this away and then somehow your main gold 
is occupied by the enemy and denied, then it's GG for you. And that's what we saw here. But if Plush had another gold out here, let's say, and he built a town center on it, he would still be going. So having, having more golds here will decrease the aggression of the map, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Maybe it is the right thing to do to have multiple golds here so it's less snowball -y. It's an interesting discussion. To be fair, this is a fringe strap. No, I agree. This is... You will not see this every day. I could have TC'd my gold. So do we have any of your ideas for this map? Things that, that uh, pure savagery can consider? Because if not, then we'll probably just move on to the next map. Emia Warrior, what do you think? All right, so nobody has anything more to say about this one. There's some beautification that could be done. Could maybe add some hills, work on distributing the relics a little bit more fairly. Maybe, you know, maybe do something cool with the center if he wants. Maybe, you know, the ring of wood or maybe the, the ring of unbuildable terrain. Hey, Ronald Rage, he's on break watching. Welcome, we're just reviewing some maps folks that I'm friends with or other scripters and uh, we're testing them and giving them feedback to help them make the maps the best that they could be. Maybe not so much that we have all the answers in the feedback but just to present them with questions and you know tell both sides of a debate and then they make the decision about what they want to do for submitting for the contests. Okay. So we have another one here from Jaw00. It's called The Park. Let's take a look at it. I was watching the one by BP also for a little while. Yeah, it was good having him here. He described where he was coming from, what he wanted. Plush Royal says, Tipe had to get me back for crushing him last game. Uh, Tipe... Yeah, Tipe went full trash and got overpowered by Mangadai plus uh, Hussar. Interesting. Because if there's one thing that we can all say about Tipe, it's that he's a man that likes his revenge. Okay. Nice, so we got... Some gold, some stone. It's a nice little park. There's a walking trail around the park. 
This is cute. Jaws00 said, it's my first seriously made map. Whoa, hold on, Jaws00. Are you saying that you made maps before this, but they weren't serious? So are these um, are these just are these player assigned forests or are these intended to be just like random patches of forest sort of in a circle around the center? Tipe says this is a very ma nice map. I played it before. Very fun with CTR. <laughs> Donald Rage says, "Man, did I hustle?" You say. No neutral forests. Wait, what? These are all player assigned forests? They can't be. Jaw zero zero. No way. Um Alright, there's there's a little bit of fish. I don't know if it's worth fishing. Ah yes, capture the the relic. Alright, I was thinking about something else. I was thinking about something else. And there is, okay, there are two relics in the center. And then the relics are all along the walking path, too. All right, that's fun. So two relics in the center, two relics on the walking path. I don't know how balanced these relics are. Nine fish for two players. Okay. And there are geese. That makes sense. It's the park. And there are deer. What? Deer in a park, Jaw Zero Zero? Standing on the road, no less. I like this, though. So you get... Okay, you do get two boar. These ones are here. This one could be a little bit tricky of a lure. <clears throat> and shallows. Okay, leading to the center where there's a lot of neutral gold. So I'm looking forward to trying this one. I think this will be a lot of fun. So Jaw Zero Zero, you said that you... Um, Ronald Rage says in Georgia there are deer everywhere. Oh, it's the same thing here too. Probably a different kind of deer. They're white-tailed deer. It's like Gold Rush, but with water around it. So John Zero Zero, do you want to join voice and describe your map? And co-cast a potential match between uh Tipe and Plush Werewolf. It looks like they have one more grudge match they wanna they wanna fight. Uh, the invitation is there, Jaw Zero Zero, if you want. If not, I'll just cast it. I think it's getting pretty late over there in the Czech Republic. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe English probably isn't your first language, so maybe maybe you're more comfortable just speaking Czech. But i got to say, I don't speak Czech. I don't really know what to say, really. All right. I won't pressure you. Give me the map and we'll get rolling. You got it. So, here we go. What? Jaw zero zero. What is this? Are you not in my server? You're not in my clan server. How are you supposed to get the best Age of Empires has to offer if you're not part of our server? I just want to know if there's something seriously wrong I forgot about. Ah, I, I doubt it. But we like doing this kind of thing. And if, you know, there's something that you see that maybe you learn from it or think about it, it can't, like, it's helpful stuff. But John Zero Zero has been around for a while. I think he's been scripting maps for a while. So he's an experienced scripter. And so he should probably think about everything. I like how you were able to make these trees border the path quite nicely. You're here now. What? I don't see you.
Did you accept the rules? You got to accept the rules. All right, so Plush Werewolf is going to share a link. And then we will go and spectate their game. What I'm curious about is how did you, did you clear these trees out with connections? Ah, excellent. Here we go. He's here. Now I can mention you. Perfect. Make sure that people are able to access the map creator. <clears throat> you could even put uh, screenshots too. Could be good. Ronald Rage says, good luck, guys. I'm going to eat, then get back to work. All right. Good luck, Ronald Rage. You know, you could eat and watch at the same time, too. Maybe you're already doing that. t says, bring it on. So that's fight and talk right there, and I'm looking forward to seeing the fight. All right, Plush is bringing it up. He's loading it. He's transferring the map. <clears throat> so Jaws00 says, I had the gaps smaller, but thought it was too easy to wall. Oh. Well, you know what you could do, Jaws00, is you could just... Um, you could put gaps in these trees on the sides of the park. I'm assuming that these trees are, yeah, like you said, they're they're a terrain, I guess. So you put down the ring of trees, and then you have a spacing to other terrain types of one, and then you put down the road, um, and then this normally would be trees here, but it's replaced by connections to be road when connecting the players. I think I got you figured out. I think I know how you made this. Geese probably make the most sense for your herdables. Although whenever I go to the park, I can guarantee you the geese don't come when I call them. They run away from me. I decided it's more interesting this way. Hmm, all right. Oh, you know what you need, Jaws00? Zero zero? You need some crocodiles in the water here or on the shallows that's what you need I bet if you asked Ronald Rage he would say that if he went to the park and there were a pool of water like this there would definitely be alligators in it oh really five seasonal variants that's cool I just need to hit generate again oh yeah look at this This looks similar, actually. You don't have crocodiles in the Czech Republic? Oh, is this is this park set in the Czech Republic? Ducks, maybe. <laughs> well, they aren't quite as dangerous as crocodiles. Technically, there are no crocodiles in Georgia. They're alligators. But it's the closest we got in the game. So this is the park during winter, and there are pine trees here. And a bunch of flags. Look at that. I'm assuming you delete these flags, though, at the start of the game. <clears throat> you probably set their HP to zero and kill them. But there is ice. What are these flags doing? There's some kind of placeholder to prevent something from spawning, probably.
Okay, here's another variant I see. It's another winter variant, but it's not pine. It's dead forest instead, which I think is really pretty. This is about what the parks in New York State would look like during the winter time. All right, you guys, Plush Werewolf, he's ready. He sent me a link. Let's go check it out. Now that we've seen some of the seasonal variants, I think that's pretty cool. They are there to prevent docking on shores, but it's still not working. You mean you can dock on the edge of the ice? Wait, what? I wonder if we'll see that. Nice, so we got Japanese versus Berbers. So Plush Werewolf definitely thinking about the hybrid aspect of the game. The hybrid aspect in the game. So he's thinking this map, it's got fish, it's got water. Because ice is a beach, not shallow. But I mean, who cares? Who cares if they dock on the ice? Is that really a problem? They could dock on the beach next to the ice, right? All right, so on the left-hand side of the map, we have Plush Werewolf playing as the green Japanese. And at 12 o'clock, we've got Tipe playing as the Blue Berbers. So about 8 o'clock versus 12 o'clock here. They can also wall there. Oh, okay, you don't want them to be able to wall this off. But they could wall here, right? Block the pond. Okay, so Tipe finding a sheep, bringing a sheep in. What's Plush up to? He is doing the same. So Tipe is familiar with this map. He's played it before in CTR, which stands for Capture the Relic. So it looks like we have a summer seasonal variant of the map. We've got some nice gravel patches here. And they've got some grass growing over them. So this feels like a really enclosed map to me, though. Is your base terrain... So, Jaw00, zero zero, is your base terrain uh, wood? So, you don't want players to wall here. Like, is it possible that a player could wall off the shallows on the other side? Prevent, uh, prevent his opponent from getting to the... The Golden Island. The base train is grass. All right, interesting. So we got three on wood for Tipe so far. So I wonder if Tipe is going to go scouts again. We'll have to watch that next one that he puts on wood to see, or if he puts it on wood. Looks like he is, yes, he's putting it on wood. So he's probably not going scouts. He could be thinking, like, I'm going to dock instead. Like, maybe he's just totally not doing the uh, the scouts build at all. Plush, pushing in deer, though. T-Bray bringing in a boar. And he's got another villager going out to wood. What? He's going to have five on wood? They can wall them off on the beach. Right. So Plush is going to dock as Japanese. It makes sense. And there are two fish nearby. Still pushing in deer. He's got... Alright, yeah, he's got six on wood, which he should be able to support constant fishing ship production and then have some for buildings of various types. So that's telling me that he is going to go fishing. What is Tipe's plan? Tipe is also coming out here. He will probably dock as well. He's got five on wood 
and Tipe is building a dock, and he's putting his sixth on wood now. So I think Tipe had a little bit more of a, a food focus early on. Then Plush had a little bit more of a wood focus. Plush pushing in his deer, which is so good for him. Tipe has not pushed in his deer. Tipe is scouting, or should be scouting. Let's see what Tipe knows about the map. Mm, not very much. What's Plush know about the map? Not very much, so neither player exploring much of the map. Oh! Got Plush taking a whack at Tipe's villager, but Tipe's scout is here. So he's not going to be able to do too much, but if the scout weren't nearby, this villager could go down to the scout. So Tipe finishing a house here. Uh, he was just housed. He's making fishing ships. T uh, Plush Werewolf already has two. Plush Werewolf just getting loom now. So his villagers are going to be harder to, for scouts to pick on. And Tipe has gotten loom recently as well. So Tipe force dropping. Is he planning? Yeah, all right. Tipe wants to go up. So he's got Feudal Age queued, and he's on his way. Question is, what does Tipe do? He's, he's building a third fishing ship. Is Tipe's plan simply to go scouts again? Maybe not over-invest in fish, build three fish or something. Just use the fish as a way to boost his, his scouts. The food income so that he can make some more scouts. It could be. How close is Plush to clicking up? Plush is at 22 villagers, 27 pop. He has not clicked up yet. He could afford to click up right now, and he should. Tipe is ahead of him. Come on, Plush, you can do it. There he goes. He's clicked up. He's bringing a boar in. All right, Boar is in. He's got one villager that is still in the town center. And where is Tipe at? Tipe is just getting to the feudal age now. Where's the stable? Or maybe it's a fire ship. Oh, look at that. They're sharing the fish. How cute. There it is. And it's only being built by six villagers, so it's not that important. So Tipe has four fishing ships. Oh, look at this. Plush Werewolf wants to wall Tipe out from this gold. That's so funny. So Tipe has a stable. He is sending villagers forward to deal with that. And he wants to just delay, delay. Is he going to be able to get it? Oh, Plush walling his own villager out. Now Tipe is coming forward. Where are the scouts, Tipe? We get some early aggression from these players, plush with this weird back barracks. And wait, what? These villagers have boxing gloves. What the heck? That's funny. What? It, what? Okay, here's a fire ship now from Tipe. And Plush losing that villager to get this uh, palisade wall up. I don't know if that's worth it. Tipe is housed, though. Plush Werewolf is also housed. Plush Werewolf has to build another dock. He does not want to let this water go. So now we're going to play Ring Around the Rosy here. Until Plush can get his fire ships out. He's got one fire ship in, in the dock already. He has another one queued up. Tipe is not going to let this villager get over here to build this dock, though. This is a disaster for Plush. So this house goes up. I think Plush has lost two villagers so far. He's at 25 villagers, and Tipe is at 23. So, I don't know. Maybe Tipe has lots of town center idle time. 
so it's really just fine. Tipe repairing this fire galley, too. Oh, man, that's so annoying. Yeah, this is a crazy game. Have you ever seen them go this aggressive? These guys, these guys have grudges. Plus, donating some HP. What? How does the villager reach the ship from that far away? Come on. All right, plus, now getting down that second dock. What are they fighting over, though? It's like, how much fish is leaving left? It's like five fish is left. Plush has got a range down. It looks like Plush wants to go archers. These scouts are going to come over here. And this is the second villager that Plush has sent to build this dock. So if you're Plush, you need to quick wall this villager and just finish your dock. But that's another villager that's going to go down. So that's three villagers down for Plush Werewolf. And Tipe building his second dock. And villager coming forward for Tipe. Plush building a blacksmith now. But there are spearmen here, and the scouts are not going to do too much damage. The Japanese archers coming forward. Does he have fletching? Nope. Not yet. So Plush has this sort of strategic victory of walling Tipe off from this gold in the center. These, these neutral golds. But was it really worth the villager? So now Tipe running around here being a pest. You know what I would do if I were plush? I would just gate this. Gate this shut, trap the scouts, be done with them. Another range coming down for plush. So he wants to go archers. And plush has a fire ship now. He's burning Tipe's villager. Oof. So Plush is keeping up with the fire ship production. What are these scouts going to destroy that fire galley? Lol. All right. And somehow Plush is keeping up with Tipe in terms of numbers. I think it's just because he's more consistently producing from his dock. Tipe going to try to micro this fire galley back. Plush is still fishing over here. Plush going to burn this fire galley. All right. He does get it. The scouts finish it off. I don't know if the fish are worth all this effort, you guys. Alright, Plush's villagers are coming forward now. Or his... His archers. And these guys look like they have fletching. Yep. So he needs to micro down the scouts with low HP. Alright, he gets them. Plush is very comfortable with archers. All right, what is Tipe up to now? He's he's almost got the resources to click up. If you're Tipe, though, these archers are going to be coming right down the bloody path. You need to close this. You need to make sure that this is one tile to the left. Because these archers are going to find this stable, and they're probably going to deny it. I don't think the stable is going to go, not, go up in time. But if, if Tipe can get knights out over Plush, Plush is going to be dead. Because uh, Feudal Age units really struggle against knights. Alright, looks like the stable does go up. Uh, Tipe, is not, he knows he can't get this one up. Yeah, he's getting out of there. These archers are going to chase this villager. We have Plush Werewolf sinking one of Tipe's fire ships. Okay, this foundation is left here. Look at that plush werewolf going deer hunting, which I think is illegal in the park, technically. And Tipe has no answer to this. He needed to, like, quick wall here and here to prevent these archers from coming in and ravaging his eco. You need to get out of here, dude. Plush is not just going to stand around with these archers. He could get so many kills. Yeah, Tipe is probably looking elsewhere at the moment. Okay, Tipe is actually taking the gold in the center too, but uh, Plush is on that. That gold is not secure. Okay, three villagers go down at least. Tipe going back out. So this area is not secure. Tipe needs to get out of here. He is almost castle though. Where is Plush? Uh, Plush is nowhere near Castle Age. He does not have the food and gold. He does have 40 villagers, though, and Tipe has 24. So Tipe has knights queued up. I don't think he's going to have the armor that he needs for these knights. I don't see a blacksmith, actually. 
or mark it, so he's not going to be able to, re, uh, to readjust his eco. I would love to see a demo shot on these archers, though, not going to lie. That would be pretty epic. But Tipe is taking so much economic damage. It, you know, it almost might be worth it for Tipe to, uh, to throw down a couple TCs and just boom. Where are those knights going to go? They're going to walk the, the loop of the park. So what park is this based off in the Czech Republic, Jaw 0, zero? Uh, I don't think Tipe can fight this. This is too many archers. It's four knights, but... It's not, you know, there's not worth it. There's no villagers to kill, no buildings to destroy from winning this. I guess he could get over here, but he could get walled out pretty easily. So Tipe with more knights in queue. He needs armor. If the... If the knights had plus two, plus two, each of plush's werewolf, plush werewolf's archers, even after fletching, would only deal one damage apiece. This Tipe is not even making villagers. He's making a scout. Interesting. It's not based on a real place, just a regular park. I want to see Tipe get 275 wood and just plop down a town center right here. Alright, that's fine too. It's on the gold. He also needs a market. Okay, he's going to mass more knights. These knights should have upgrades, though. Okay, he does have plus one. So there's... If you're Tipe, there's, there's a blacksmith somewhere. Here it is. All right, I'm just blind. So that'll help him. Each of these archers are now going to be doing um, two damage apiece to each of these knights. So it'll be a little bit better of an exchange. That armor is really going to help him. But without plus two, you don't want to fight under a town center. But he can maybe find his way over to Plush's gold. Oh, he's going to take the fight anyway. Alright, Plush has crossbows. It's time to get out of here. I don't know. He got another vill pick off of the Plush werewolf. So he's at 33 villagers and the Plush, plush werewolf is at 44. But some of that... Some of that are fishing ships, I believe. So Tipe, not, he does not, oh no, this is plush. Where's Tipe? Here we go, Tipe is still making knights. He needs to get plus two, plus two as soon as possible. Now that he's got a big ball of crossbowmen to worry about. And he may also consider a siege workshop in a mangonel. Oh, nice. I like this siege workshop. Look at that. Just blocking the path. Tipe does not have any respect for the fact that pedestrians may wish to walk here. And if Tipe could wall this off too, maybe even take the stone, maybe like wall right here across, that could be really good for him. Okay, Tipe is housed. Alright, Plush Werewolf with 50 villagers, Tipe with 42. So Plush Werewolf coming, coming across, and I think this is a town center for Plush. Um, yep, there it is. So he wants that neutral gold. So Tipe needs to make something happen here pretty soon. However, Plush is... Okay, Plush is two town centers. And he's building a monastery so that he can collect relics. Still no armor from Tipe. And ironically, his knights are trapped now, actually. He can't get out without getting um, killed by the crossbows. Tipe, please get plus two. 
Don't even, no, don't, oh, don't fight that. Okay, he does have a mangonel. Where is the manga? Oh, it's, it's, all, it's being built all the way back here. Okay, he is doing a lot of damage to the crossbows. He's going to lose all of his knights, though, I think. Plush Werewolf with a score lead. It's hard to say, you know, what the impact of losing this army is on the score. Because I didn't check before. But, um, a Pyrrhic victory. Tipe does have plus two now. Okay, good. So his, his knights will be more effective with that. The Mangonel is rolling forward. Unfortunately for Tipe, there is a castle here. Tipe is going to flatten the deer. With the man canal, that's pretty funny. And there, there. I don't think there's a gap here. No, there's not. There's a castle right here. Is Tipe going to learn that that castle's location the hard way? Let's see what Tipe knows. Uh, he does know that that castle's there. The castle does not have ballistics. Tipe losing a lot of important health on his siege, though, which is unfortunate for him. I think his priority needs to build a siege workshop here and push this way and take Plush Werewolf off of that gold. But instead, his siege are going all the way around, which is unwieldy. Jaw zero, 00, I don't think this is any ordinary park. I know that's I know you're trying to be modest, but this is no ordinary park. I can tell. So Plush Werewolf is going to know that these siege weapons are weak. Okay, it's a good hit with the Mangonel there on these crossbows. Oh, wow! Great hit from Tipe with that Mangonel. He needs more. More Mangonels. We got a two-town center boom back here for the Berbers. Plush is around 1k score ahead of Tipe. Where are these knights going? Tipe, I think he has some knowledge of what Plush is up to back here. Maybe he just wants to go raid. Maybe it's maybe it's just that simple. Just going to ignore the castle fire. Run underneath this town center and just, just kill villagers. Maybe he feels like he's behind and he wants to do that. Okay. That could be effective. Plush pulling all of these lumberjacks back. I think this is a this is a pretty bold play by Tipe. These villagers are going to have to go all the way back to the castle. So he's found he's found another town center back here, but these knights are plus two, so they don't care about the town center arrow fire anymore. And he's going to clean up a lot of villagers this way. So this town center is full, and these are two more villagers for Tipe. It's a park of medieval warfare. Okay, he does not have enough knights to dive this town center, so he should pull those back. And he has more knights over here. Berber knight spam is just so dangerous. It's powerful, too. He does not have um, Blast Furnace yet on these knights. But does Plush not realize that this town center is under attack? Okay, Tipe pulling out. Pulling out of there, too. So I would say that knight raid was probably worth it for Tipe. He's making knights out of four stables now. So Tipe is not going to be... He's not going to be Imperial Age anytime soon. Plush Werewolf is on his way up to the Imperial Age, though. And he's getting ballistics. He's got crossbows queued. He wants a castle here on this gold. So, I mean, Tipe's window of opportunity is literally right now. He needs to attack. He needs to deny this castle. And then he needs to dive this town center. If he wants to win, that's his win condition. But for whatever reason, Tipe is going this way instead. Taking the long way around the park. So now the plush werewolf is imp. It's going to be Arbalister. It's going to be... It's going to be Bracer. It's going to be Chemistry. And these knights will be shredded again. 
So JAW 0, zero maybe some feedback could be maybe more neutral resources on the outside in case you do lose the middle, you know? Could be good for the map. Okay, here's the here's the crossbow army waiting for upgrades. Their arbalister now. Hopefully Plush remembers to get Bracer this time. He did not get it when he was playing as Mongols last game. Plush going for a conversion. No, I think Tipe is basically saying it worked really well last time to raid my opponent's eco, so I'm just going to go around and do that. And he's going to force Plush to come back and deal with it instead of attacking him. So Tipe's got a gather point set forward here. I don't know what this is. Hopefully we see stone walls, but maybe it's just like free villagers for Plush. He's going to dive this town center. He does have the attack now. Plush Werewolf will be here, though. And then Plush Werewolf will kill knights. Lots of them. He's stonewalled this out. So now Tipe is going to come and slaughter some villagers. Of course, he knows that these Arbalisters are here. He just, he's just cracking open the nut, if you will. The coconut to get to the flesh and the, uh, the water inside. But all of these knights are doomed. He surely must know that. So how many villagers can he take with him is the question. And Tipe, knowing his opponent is in Imperial Age, is going to want to go up himself, but he's nowhere near Amp. He's building more stables. And uh, Tipe is at 65 villagers. How's Plush Werewolf doing? Plush Werewolf is at 70 villagers, so he's not faring much better. The difference is that Plush is in Imperial Age and Tipe is not. So if Tipe could somehow get to Imperial Age and convert all these knights to Cavaliers, he'll be in really good shape. So Tipe's men are making their retreat, but this reminds me of the Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, the final movie, where all those cavalry charge into battle and Faramir's the only guy that gets dragged back to the castle on his horse lying on the ground and foot caught in the stirrup. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of uh, health left here. And is Tipe going to just dive this town center? Uh, does, just does not care about this castle fire. There's just so many knights. Oh, okay, he should respect the castle fire. Another idea was to make the road unbuildable. I will add neutral gold and berries to make expanding worth it. Yeah, because there's nothing out here right now, right? So if your opponent controls these neutral resources, it's a huge advantage. All right, we have a pause from Tipe. All right, and tell me that Tipe is close to Imp. Nope, he's not. He's still massing knights. So he's going to come this way instead, but the plush werewolf has walled this off. So Tipe is going to discover that, and if plush werewolf is smart, he will actually stonewall behind this and then camp his archers right here. And then encroach, approach, approach Tipe and trap him in there and kill all of his knights. Come on, plush, you know you can do it. Because now Tipe has to come out this way. But he's not going to do it. He still should probably get a lot of kills, though, as um, Tipe runs past. But could you imagine if these archers were blocking these knights? <sighs> knights just cannot fight, fight Arbalisters, though. And Tipe knows it's over, calls the GG. GG well played. I think this is a fun map. But we'll see the guys in chat. We'll see what they say. Any ideas or feedback that they have for the map. GG, says Tipe. Tipe over commitment on Castle Age, I think. Just had so many knights, was never able to get up to Imp, and uh, never got that final armor, which is desperately needed against our blisters. So Tipe will have to have a grudge match another day against Plush. Mm hmm. 
<clears throat> so what kind of uh, ideas or feedback do you guys have for JAWS 00, Zero about this map? Plush says, fun map. I agree about adding more neutral res on the rest of the map, but super fun as is. Plush says, it's like a closed hybrid map. Very interesting. You needed Chimera on this map. Chimera could be really good at chopping through the trees with their ballista elephants. Plush Werewolf ultimately stonewalling both sides. It can be annoying to stonewall, though, because you need to send twice as many villagers, essentially. Maybe even three times as many. Because there's three sections to wall. But I think that's fine. It, it fits with the theme of the map. You just don't like seeing them defile the road with all these buildings, do you? You can't build in the middle of a path. People are walking there. Uh, no, I get you, though. If it's unbuildable, it would make the map more open and aggressive, for sure. What do you guys think? Plush World says those corridors could be deadly for traps. Can be deadly for traps. I like that feature. Uh, yes. So we were talking about that. There was a time when Tipe had all of his knights in here. You could have camped your archers out here, and uh, the knights would have been trapped. Jazz Zero Zero says, because currently, who wins water gets all the gold and can wall. Yeah, so why don't you guys um, share your thoughts with Jazz Zero Zero? Because he can always um, he can always put down DLC rock and mask the road over it. Or he can put building blockers on the road, perhaps, that make it unbuildable. Either way. Roughly even KD, though. I think... Tipe lost more military, but Plush lost more villagers. Which sounds about right. It sounds like a Plush Werewolf game. But traps on the road also seem exciting. Yeah, that's true. Tipe says this map is too closed for knights. Well, making the road unbuildable would make mounted units more viable. Blush Werewolf saying... A couple piles of two or three gold and stone in the neutral areas would be good. Reminds me of Mongolia. Lots of narrow corridors where archers are king.
I'll definitely add gold, says Jaw00. Zero zero. <clears throat> Sounds good. So Jaw zero zero, what are the reasons for and against the uh, the single single line of trees along the side of the the road here? What's uh, you know what's the thinking or the logic for that? Flesh World says, I think unbuildable roads will be good. Leave the trapping to people with skilled micro. That'll be cool. Well, if the roads are unbuildable, it'll be a lot harder to trap your opponent. I guess if they're on the road. You can still trap them if they're between the trees and the beach. With a gate, you could trap them. <clears throat> it complicates the whole map. Do tell, Jaw Zero Zero. Creating two pathways, essentially. You know what I think you need on this map? I think you need to chalk this map full of eye candy. Lots of tree reeds and useless tree reeds, by the way. And maybe you could put some reeds on the beach, actually. That actually may not be a bad idea. That Even Krizini does that. You could put some reeds down on your beaches. I'm talking about DLC grass and, uh, and all those other eye candy reeds scatter across. Um, it could be interesting. Well, you know, I was going to say, and I don't know what you think about this idea, but you know that you can upgrade forests, right? So, like, you could take some tree, tree TD, or some tree K, and you could upgrade, um, I don't know, some type of forest that you're not using, potentially, and you could change the trees from... The type that comes with that forest to all be that same tree type. Because if you have the same tree in a ring with the path, it'll look more like it's like a park, like those trees were planted there, specifically of the same type. This is good too, though. It's just something you could consider. Anybody else have any other ideas for Jaw Zero Zero? <clears throat> yeah, this is a pretty clean park. The grass is well, as well, you know, cared for. There aren't we reeds and weeds everywhere. They get rid of the cattails on the beach. There's a lot of gold in the center. Jaw Zero Zero says, but I will add more terrain masking and probably won't have much time for the trees. Now, well, fair enough. I was just thinking you could make this look like a row of trees that was planted if they all were the same. All right, Plush. Thanks for being here. We have played a lot of Age today. Yeah, I have been playing a lot of Age. I think I might need to take a, a break from Age for now. We got some good games, though. And I need to I need to look at one more map first. But I think I'm going to give the creator ideas about it before we, sh we showcase it. Yep. Have a good day. <clears throat> Yeah, 
yeah, no, uh, no problem, Jaw Zero Zero. It was good to have the content, and maybe you got something out of watching the match. Maybe we'll play it as a community game sometime. It could be fun. Help you test it. So with that, I do think I'm going to end the stream here. It seems like everybody has said all the things that they needed to say. I've said everything I needed to say and then some more. And uh, I need to rest my voice a little bit. <clears throat> but hopefully we'll be back later with some team games. It's a Saturday, so folks are generally more available to play. And who knows, maybe we'll get some community games in after that as well. It'd be interesting to try some of these, some more of these maps out in community games. But um, I really appreciate all of you coming, participating. I've got some more work on Flotagono I have to do. I don't know if I'm going to do it now, but I will certainly do it soon. And I'm trying to get that map all finished up and, and ready for us to play and, and ready for uh, Flota to, uh, to test as well. It's not going to happen right now, though. Uh, we said we were going to do this, and uh, I think we're going to do a little bit more on Sunday. So I have the chance to look at this other, this other map that I was sent. So thanks, everybody, for coming. Got more work to do. Got some more interesting content, and I, I hope to see you there. So thanks, everybody, and uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys next time.